Hey, Jemima. Hello, Tyson. How are you? I'm great. I'm well, back hey, already. Well back. Welcome, yeah. uh, listeners, to another episode of Nick, Tyson and Videotape. Nick is still MIA. He's uh, He's got a bubba. That he's mm. looking after these yep. couple of weeks. Cute. Um, so Jealous. We, we're, we're, yeah, it must be very <laughs> cute. Um, as a as a Superman fan, he has uh, he has blessed his child with a very cute Superman related oh, name. Blessed. I'll let Nick tell us all about Superman that when he returns. Superman related. Yes. Um, and Martha. <laughs> Martha. <laughs> Martha! Your mom's uh-huh. name is Martha? <laughs> I think that was what happened in that movie. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, so, yes, Nick will um, maybe be joining us next week, but we shall see. But in the meantime, we've got Jemima back again. Hey, Jemima. Hello. What's thank you for on? having no, me. No, thank you so much for coming back again. We had such fun last week talking about parenthood. <laughs> it was um, great. It was a lot of fun. And we have brought you back for a very special episode mm. this week. Parenthood uh, connections galore as well, yeah, actually, I think. Good yeah, good point. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're having a big old chat about where we're, we're going to be attacking a bit of a, a retrospective look at certain years here on Nick Tyson Videotape, where the plan is to eventually really kind of catch up to where we are now, oh. starting from 1990, really is kind of the, I think the earliest we'll go. We might throw some years in the 80s in there just to kind of mix it up a little bit, but we're having a bit of a retrospective look at 1999 today. One of my absolute favourite years. you know years. what? One of the best years for film. It's I don't so think good. it can it's, be argued. It's insane. I don't think that there's been a more interesting year since. Interesting is definitely the year, the yeah. word I would use. That's yeah, it. For sure. There is There was a very interesting bunch of films released. Yeah. Such very yeah, varied topics. Mega, varied. mega, mega films and like baby, great, last the test of times, you know, on DVD films. Very and- true. Very true. And of course, we're not heading these years in any kind of order whatsoever. It was kind of a random, spontaneous, I just pulled a year out of the hat and it turns you out this might be our- yeah, picked my favorite year and my favorite go. film last week. So... Look at this. My other favourite film is this year. So, <laughs> oh, there you go. And I do know what that is. Yes, because I probably And spoiler alert, it's didn't... not on my list. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Didn't shut up about it last week. If you heard last week, then you should be able to guess. That's it. Yep. Um, so, Jemima, just before we get started, I'm going to tell people where they can find us. Great idea. Nick Tyson Videotape on iTunes, on the podcast page of iTunes. Get on there. Give us a subscribe. Give us a like. Um, whatever they have there. Like and uh, subscribe and rate. Yeah. Um, and rate review, it five. Rate it five stars. And then stars, review. Yep. Say something fun and nice. You can also find us on Facebook. We're having a good old chat over there. It's a lot of fun with uh, the listeners getting involved. Uh, there's lots of content going up there on Twitter as well. You can catch us there. It's all just Nick Tyson Videotape. Search away. And if you want to email us, that email address is nicktysonvideotape at gmail.com. Uh, send us a review suggestions or any kind of questions you'd like us to have a little chat about in the mailbag. We'll be getting back into that when a Nick returns. Uh, but in the meantime... We're going to get stuck into our retrospective look at 1999. Jemima, let's <laughs> tell me a little bit about where you were at in 1999. Well, uh, I was in my last year of primary school. Last year of primary? <laughs> yes. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah, my parents were getting a divorce, mm. uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, as they do. <laughs> as they do, as parents do. Um, uh, I, I couldn't tell you what I was watching. My favorite song was um, Sugar Ray's Every Morning. I remember that. That Still a great song. But a, what is it? Every morning there's a halo every hanging. Every morning there's a... Yeah, you know. <laughs> great, great song. Um, just... But I, I don't know. I was living in Ivanhoe. Yep. I used to go to the swimming holes down there. The swimming holes. There were swimming holes. <laughs> just a few, like, you know, <laughs> 15 amazing. years ago, swimming holes. Yeah, yeah. great. I anyway. love it. Play yeah. some stickball. Yeah, we're going to play stickball. Yeah, I rollerbladed. I tried to skateboard. I didn't really... I didn't watch a lot of films. I, yeah. I, mean, I watched a lot of Disney films over and over on I VHS. Bet. Yeah. But, um, well, this yeah. was kind of... Uh, this was the, the beginning of the DVD kind of craze. True, true. This was really when things were starting to heat up. Um, well, this was my... I was uh, in 11th grade or year 11 for Australia. So 11th I was, form? Yeah. Fifth form? Is that what they, no, <laughs> Whatever they call it? <laughs> no. Back in the 40s? Yes. Yeah, so. what, what my dad would call yeah, year 11. Yeah, what my dad would call it. Yeah, um, yeah you're right, form 5. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, what was that? Um, 16, 17, I was really into like indie VHS, like Pulp Fiction had turned me onto this, this, cool. this very, you know, deep and dark 
uh, a hallway full of bad Tarantino knockoffs, mm-hmm. left, right, and center. There were still plenty of them in there 99 as well. There were still plenty of well. them. Oh, yeah. man, they came up. To, it was like 99 was kind of, I think, a lot of the tipping point where we were getting to the point where it was like, you know what? You can't just make the same movie no. and bad versions of it. Mm-hmm. It was the point where they were like, man, we need to see some new stuff happening. And it's amazing, like, really, as soon as you hit 2000, like, the whole landscape of cinema changed, Absolutely. really. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, it... There's a couple of movies I think you can put your finger on to having a large part in that. And no doubt we are going to be talking about oh, a few yeah. of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what so we're going to do, we're going to run through a top ten. Yeah. Now, we have many more lists than That's just a top it. ten. It was impossible just to want to talk about ten yeah. films. So what we're going to do, we're going to do our top ten, but we're going to break it up with some fun things in between. We're going to talk about some forgotten films, some disappointments. Yeah. Some, we might have to play a couple of games. We've got some I, games I have lined a game up. for you. I have a game for you too, Jemima. <laughs> Yay. And so it's going to end up being a bit of a chat about probably about 60 or 70 films in the yeah. end. Right. Uh, but, of course, we're going to try and focus on our top ten. But before we start... Start that. I have an eleven. Do you have an eleven? I have a twenty-three. Oh, so Jesus! I, <laughs> I actually have more that didn't make the list than did. I did. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I have a really interesting thing where I have what I movies that I not only think were were kind of some of the best movies of the year, but just movies that I kind of was like. I can acknowledge that there might be better than movies in my top 10, yeah, but I'm yeah. still putting this one in my top 10 because uh, it's yep. about me. It's my movies. That's it, absolutely. These are the movies that mean the most to me. Yeah, this is my best, and it's not necessarily the best, mm. but, you know, I can't, this is, this is what has defined me and my upbringing. And that is exactly the kind of angle I'm taking it as well. I'm yeah. sure we would get plenty of nasty emails saying, I can't believe you think this movie is better than this movie, etc. I am going to be like strung up like uh, when, <laughs> when they get to like my top few, really. And this is the thing. like I've, I've, I can acknowledge that there's a few movies in, in my top ten that I don't think a lot of people like. Mm-hmm. But, you know, this is, they are the movies that I, I decided I had to kind of think about what are the movies that above all else, if you right now ask me, what movie do you want to watch? They are the movies that are on my top 10 list. Okay. Um, Yeah. So that makes it fun. I've got a runner up. Do you have one runner up? And we can do a runner up each before we get into our top 10. One main runner up. Oh, shit. Oh, look, I will definitely pick one. Um, right, I've got, I'll, of, I'll go through my the, first runner. My okay. first runner up, and my only runner up, because I tried really hard to limit it just to the 10 plus one, mm-hmm. is Toy Story 2. <gasps> oh. Lovely movie. Obviously, the sequel to the first Toy Story. Probably the best of the three. Ooh. Mm, so it's on my list. It's on Jamara's list, so we're going to come back to that 10. a little bit later. All right. Well, then I'm going to give you... Uh, I've written some things down twice. Um, I want to say... Galaxy Quest Ooh, is my eleven. Good call, good call. It's not on my list. Okay, it's in my it's in my best, but couldn't bring it to put on my list list. Yeah, I had to cut out. Um, I have I have one big comedy on here, and I was just like, this is very it, similar to yeah, how I structured. I was it, like, it well, was what's in, what's my it. comedy? What's my big comedy that I want to put on? Yeah, here? so Galaxy Quest and another film, which we might get back to later. Um, were two that I was like, oh, I really want to put you on the list, but there's a third film that was extremely important to me as a mm. child that has to be on there. And sure. So Galaxy know, Quest got the bump to 11. Galaxy Quest got the bump to 11. And you know what? That's fine. It is a it is a very funny movie. Yeah. Um, I love it. Sick. It's, a, it's one of those... What do you think of Tim Allen? Oh, well, it's hard to know because, of course, I, I know him from that and then he did the Santa Claus films... And I Which know, were kind of a little bit too late for me. I don't yeah, think I was well, ever... I was the right age for the first one, yeah. but like, I I was too young for a tool time. It wasn't it wasn't something on on the telly Ooh. in my house growing up. So, sure. you know, I knew all the jokes. I knew all the references because yeah. of The Simpsons pretty much. Sure. But like, <laughs> I didn't watch it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, so I'm, and I, I've always felt too old for Jonathan Taylor Thomas, weirdly enough. So, oh, yeah. JTT. I, yeah, JTT, because he was like a real like a kid kid in that, and I must have had like a year on him or something. Sure. So, yeah, maybe not. I, I don't know. <laughs> he was very short too, and I was always tall for my age. So like, you know, when you're it's a never kid, gonna work. it matters so yeah, much. <laughs> no, it's just it was just not meant to be between yeah, the two of you, apparently. That's it. Um, yeah, look, this is probably 
I, this is my favourite film that he's in, I think. That's pretty safe yeah, to say. Easy. Like, I don't think I could ever sit through something like Jungle to Jungle or For Richer or Poorer mm. or some of those. Like, he really just didn't kind of work it out as a movie star. I did like Jungle to Jungle. Uh, <laughs> I can't say I could ever I like it. I yeah. think it's just, I would just sit and I, tolerate it. I haven't seen it lately and I'd probably find it very offensive now. Like, who knows? <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, just, I'm I think sure that would probably be quite a big part of it, the yeah, offensive nature. Probably of that. not considered appropriate That's, anymore. What's but, your favourite performance in uh, Galaxy Quest? Oh, well. I mean, it's got to be Alan Rickman, doesn't it? it and really and the is. fellow who um, uh, what was his name? The guy that worships him, his <laughs> yeah. Know? So yeah, he's the, yeah. That, the 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 alien guy, the yeah, little the alien, alien one. Guy. So he's yeah. He plays oh, the and, he plays um, the dad in um, Veronica Mars, and he was oh, the right. he was I never watched the, Veronica um, Mars. The photographer in Just Shoot Me. Yes, that, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Um, I can't think. Of Elliot his name was right. his name in the Just Shoot Me, but um, yeah, I'll get his name I right now. Don't know his real name. I think that's him. I yeah. hope that's him. No, he is. He's the one. Yes, uh, and he's fantastic in it too. I think that in terms of the like, it's. Uh, I mean, it's a comic book film and of sorts. You know what I mean? We're, at the time when they weren't really doing them, I, Star Trek is a television show, like more so, obviously. But I mean, sure. It is parodying, uh, like, a, I think that they did it with, like, the, the Batman serial, etc. Like, they made the actors come and pretend to be swept up in, like, a real-life mystery or something. Like, it was a kind of a gag. and uh, Yeah, well, it's like, also kind of the plot of Three Amigos, yeah, really. Like, yeah, I think it's, um, yeah. yeah, it's not exactly um, an untapped resource, no. this kind of plot. But I think it works really well. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's the kind of... It's the kind of film that I guess the, there's enough genres that you could play it a few different times. Yeah, definitely. It's Tropic Thunder, really, yeah. as well, uh, uh, kind yeah. of. Yeah, I don't um, really remember that film. Sure. But, yeah, the, <laughs> the idea of the of the people playing the roles getting thrust into the actual real-life scenario mm. of that. Um, oh, it's all, look, it, you know, and it always gets that fish out of water kind of, you get the good laughs out of that. But there's just something about this that I think it's, it's, a, it's much clever, uh, it's much smarter than it comes across yeah. as initially. I think it's, it appears to be a kind of big dumb comedy and it's really not. It's quite lovely and the jokes are really kind of on point, especially if you are a sci-fi TV fan. Yeah, there's definitely. Some, there's some stuff in there that goes kind of, runs kind of deep. Yeah. And it's, it's a big fan play in a way that even the fans are participating like they've got those like geeks that are on you know their like radio headsets like hacking into stuff as yes. well like it's this like all these levels of sort of interaction anyway i look it's a, it's like a delightful comedy just with you know it's like a, yeah it's like a, a sitcom kind of you know gag role basically and yeah. it's it's great absolutely yeah uh very good very good well i'm gonna move on to my number 10 Ooh, how exciting Ooh. Is, I'm what just. I've, I've got the feeling that I'm just going to change my mind about all of these in like three days. Me too. But my number ten, we were just talking about the big dumb comedy, and <gasps> I was throwing around which one I wanted to be my big dumb comedy, and I've gone with American Pie in number ten. Oh, okay. Yes. It's not on my not list, on your list, but I love it. It's, yeah. it's on my other twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's going to happen. Yeah. And I, yeah. It's 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 funny because I think when we all thought about American Pie. We all just kind of thought it was the the kind of the naughty, sexy teen comedy of the time. Yeah. When you, and you know, getting to watch it as like a 17, 18 year old kid, I think that was the appeal of it a lot. That kind of like, it was our generation's, you know, porkies or, yeah, or, or yeah. Revenge of the Nerds or that kind of definitely. Ilk where it's. Um, yeah, it's more. It's it's definitely a like a sex romp, and I'm mm. using the <laughs> the air quotes for that. Um, but it's so much more meaningful than that when you come back and watch it when you're a bit older. Um, it's kind of it's got a really sweet mentality, even though it, a lot of the gags can kind of be seen as a bit kind of, you know, it's it's maybe kind of a bit interesting in its in its um, kind of gender. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, representations can be can be a little kind of iffy at times, but it's it. I think its heart is in the right place, mm. and especially um, considering like you know its most famous parts are a dude fucking a pie and yeah. and someone talking about putting a flute somewhere. Yeah, it can be really really lovely the way that they show like the friendship between the guys, the the um you know the relationship between Jiminy's dad 
and yeah. that kind of that kind of weird. And uh, his father really trying to understand him and and being so careful not to make him feel embarrassed. Yeah, like it's exactly. This, it's this exactly. over parenting. And the fact that <laughs> even at the very end, like of the film, they even present the message about sex not being everything, like yeah. how it's not the important part of this kind of journey that they're no, on. No, it's like it's it's the it, and there's that kind of melancholic thing of. It's like high school's ending and your lives are about to begin as adults. Like that's what's really happening. Yeah, and, exactly. And you think that you've just got to get, you've got to have had sex in order to start as an adult. Yeah. And of course, no, it isn't important no. at all. No. And it, look, and you know, it just so happens that, like I said, it's scattered among yeah. di- diarrhea gags and yeah. stiffer and yeah. all that kind of stuff, which are all like hilarious. Like totally. I laugh my ass off at this film. And I've, I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of an apologist for most of the series as well. I, I quite like two. I'm a huge fan three. of three. Yeah. No, I like, love three. I'm yeah. fine with it. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I like it. It's probably mm. the weaker out of the four if I had to pick, but I still really enjoyed watching it. And I missed four actually. Well, four actually, four actually amps up a lot of what one was doing, but it plays it in an adult way now because they're adults yeah, still yeah. trying to hang on to the teenage. So I've kind of grown up with the American Pie guys in a sense. Right, like okay. I, I was around the same age they were in the first one. And so when it got to American Reunion and, and they're like in their early 30s and, you know, they're all still talking about the same stuff and Stifler's still Stifler and it's kind of, it's trying, they're trying to reassess their group dynamic. I was like, it kind of dawned on me that I've actually <laughs> kind of grown up with the American Pie guys, yeah. which is really strange. That's sweet. It is kind of sweet. Because, yeah. you know, like it's, yeah, like I said, I actually kind of, I'll happily support all those films, despite, you know, people, I know a lot of people don't think much of two, three or four, really, but mm. I think they've all got their merits. Very easily watchable movies. Definitely. All right, let's move on. Your number 10. All right, my number 10, um, it's The Sixth Sense. Let's hang on to that for a little All while, right. shall we? All right, so we're going to see that again later. All right, Ooh. well then, uh, shall we move on to well, nine? Well, it's my number nine. Yeah. Oh, I love this. This is fun. It is. Um, my number nine is a movie that people give a lot of shit to nowadays. That I It has been a couple of years since I've seen it, but I'm still, I'm still team this movie. Okay. And that is American Beauty. Oh. Yes. Okay. Nowhere near Nowhere my Nowhere near your list. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, and I like, and this is the thing. I watch it, and I completely understand why. But I can't separate the effect that film had on me mm. at that time. Totally, I bought into that film like one hundred percent. I was whatever is Richie fucking what's his name with the camera. <laughs> Looking at the plastic bag, <laughs> saying it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. I was like, um. oh man, like. What is life? Like yeah. I was on board all that's, the way, and beautiful. I think I can watch it now and acknowledge that it is—it's manipulative and it's very kind of tacky in a lot of its symbolism, mm. um, and very like it—it it, it is the sledgehammery of most sledgehammers. Like it just yeah. bashes you to the ground. But I think at that at that point, it was it was doing something that I don't think a lot of other movies at the time had done. That was kind of trying to make symbolism and metaphor accessible to the masses in, yeah, to a okay. degree. Yeah, yeah. And so and especially for someone like me who hadn't really kind of come across a lot of that. I mean obviously, you know, it is it, it pops up in a lot of very good films almost without your awareness. Mm. But in this it's it's obviously it's a very deliberate visual visual and story based metaphors and symbolism that for a 17-year-old kid who is maybe just starting to realize what art can do yeah that's a very it's a very important kind of transition i think yeah absolutely i think that um yeah i i, I don't think my issues are with you know it's yeah it's 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 moral fiber i guess and yeah, okay. how it chooses to resolve certain things i mean sure, sure, sure. his eroticizing of the of a teenage girl there like, is no defending that at yeah, all yeah there's is... none and then i think though had that not been a part of the film i still have an issue with the idea that he has to be assassinated in the end by a home of like a closeted you know uh homophobe like it's uh, yeah. i mean that's the thing is it's like it's like takes it it um it kind of punishes one vice with 
another almost in a, yeah, in yeah, a way no, that I, and, I would agree and that's kind of and i sort of just like eh, like that isn't really the way to wrap it up and also <laughs> when the bike he's like he dies smiling and i'm just like <laughs> come on i love <laughs> what the thing i do love is Annette sure. benning she think, is yeah she so does a great. wonderful performance she gets all of the best lines in the film too like yep. they're all like the you're the king and she's like i'll tell you it's eggshells and miracle grow <laughs> like she gets to say all the really fun stuff and yeah. she's 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 wonderfully ludicrous yes you know sure. and her when he dies and when she finds him dead that is one of the funniest things that she like walks in ready to kill him finds out he's dead and like falls into his coats in the closet like because she's just so devastated and it's a sad but it's so that is so funny and i'm like yeah i think the film could have been a lot funnier secret but, comedy yeah yeah no it's definitely i mean it is a comedy it's, it's a black like, comedy yeah. all the way yeah of course there's 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 many laughs to be had but i think yeah that those are the maybe unintentional laughs mm. that that Again, it, it though, achieves. as a child, I acknowledged it as a great film, and that yep. was partly because I remember all the Oscars, and the sure. Oscars were, you know, they were an institutional like law to me. Like there wasn't yep. a, you know, if if you had an Oscar, like you were the oh, best it's very film rare ever. You, it's, you know? Yeah, it's very rare you That's disagree it. with the Oscars when you're that kind of yeah, agent. exactly. It's, yeah, if, when they come out, you just assume that it is the best movie. Exactly. And for a movie like you know, we're talking about the a very uh, a very rare feat for it to have won what it did definitely having win picture director writer and the two acting awards which mm. has happened three other times or two other times with just it Silence of the lambs oh, and no, no no it's not one of those no no which one was it missing? the last one was silence of the lambs because oh. it happened one night then one flew of the cuckoo's nest then silence of the lambs no one has done the top five oh because it didn't win actress cooper yeah. No, it didn't win actress. Yeah. Who did win act? Was it Gwyneth Paltrow? No, that wasn't that year, was it? No, no it was Hilary Swank. Ah, yeah. Boys no, you're right. Yeah. It didn't win actress. So, um, but it did win, obviously. So it won the f- those other four, mm. which is definitely a feat. Yeah. Um, and obviously makes you when you watch it at that time, you go, okay, so it won best director, and then so you see things like. The use of the red color, yeah. And you're like, man, direction, like mm. the fucking direction, mm. man, like you know, and well, stuff the use like that. Of, it, has, it has very iconic music and those the images as well of the rose petals. The rose are, petal imagery, the fan, the like, know, the fantasies lasting, themselves are. It's a lasting image, though. Yeah, like it absolutely. belongs to cinema history now. Sure, you know that, and that is that. It makes the film important to say the least. Yeah. You know? A friend of mine had this great Facebook status yesterday, which was about how. Remember all those movies in the nineties about like middle aged men who had really great well pay- well paying jobs, and like they were sp- but they were somehow stuck in this dead end job. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, you know, where are those jobs now? And can I have one? I'll because have one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Like it it isn't like it's not a crisis of like oh no I'm I'm stuck in a monotonous like well, this- money <laughs> job. That's such an eighties nineties idea. Like. <laughs> It is. We don't tolerate that anymore. Like, no, it's we don't. If not someone in if, our yeah, cinema, yeah. yeah. No, you're hundred percent right. Well, that kind of that that was part of like parenthood would, as yeah, well. Like exactly. the, Steve Martin complaining about this this job that he didn't get a promotion for. I'm like, man, if you're gonna live in, to afford in that house, that that's you're, it. If you can afford to live in that house right now. You're doing fine. Like yeah. you're doing okay. And also, um, but like we have to in the cinema today, that man would have to be an absolute villain. You know, you could yes. like him, but he is absolutely no doubt a bad guy or like you know someone who lives in excess or yeah. doesn't value people or something because yeah. that's the only way to tolerate. Well, this is yeah. <laughs> that guy. You this know? is the this this. There was kind of a yeah a weird influx of. Uh, kind of celebrating the midlife crisis mm. to a degree and kind of finding like uh, like the glamorous side to it in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Like it almost made it like an enviable thing because it was it was like you could throw off the shackles of life and, you know, sit on the couch and watch cartoons when you were meant to be at work. And it's kind of like we, we kind of appreciate now that that's actually just kind of pathetic. Yeah. And so it was, yeah, so it's, it, you know, but I suppose you could kind of watch this. It has been a couple of years since I've watched it, to be honest. So you could probably watch it with that angle and maybe actually, maybe that's part of, that can be part of its its evolution as a film is that maybe we can look at Lester now and kind of not empathize with him at yeah. all. no, absolutely. And maybe so he becomes like almost like this incredibly unreliable narrator, narrator because we're, 
he's he's, he he, he thinks that the audience is on his side, but we're not. And that makes the film a lot funnier as well. Yeah, I could imagine it would. I still think it's a comedy, like more than it is anything else. But that idea of the like, oh poor me. You know, yeah. I'm a very successful, happily married man or whatever. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, anyway, we could talk about that forever. Number nine, Jemima. Number nine. Well, okay. Uh, my number nine is, I, I nearly changed my mind like six times just okay. as you were talking then, <laughs> but I'm going to go with uh, The Virgin Suicide. Okay. It's not on my list, so go for it. All right, cool. Well, I mean, I, the thing is, I don't have a whole lot to say about it only because I haven't watched it as recently all the way through as I would like to say I have. I'm a huge Sofia Coppola fan. You are, yeah. This is the breakout film for her. Was it um, her first film? Uh, yeah, her first feature, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful movie. Uh, I think it it's is. interesting to compare it to The Beguile that's coming out because it has that same idea of men entering this private world of girls yep. and a lot about sexual tension yep. and teenagehood and first sexual experiences. And, you know, I'm all over that stuff. Yep. So, like, um, I... Look, obviously, she found a real talent in Kirsten Dunst, and I love. I just, I look. I think it's it's a beautiful film. Yeah, I mean, sure. it's nowhere near my favorite Sofia Coppola film, but I. What would that be? Oh gosh, it's tough. Okay, okay. it's it'd be Marie Antoinette. Okay, That's sure. That's my favorite of hers. I have and not seen that one. Somewhere would be. A, it's a very close tie oh, with that. That is yeah. the other one I haven't also haven't seen. They're both um, fantastic. You yeah. would love Marie Antoinette, actually. Okay, like, it's a, I'll give it a watch. I, I think I was put off because it wasn't particularly reviewed well. I remember, and I yeah. think that kind of put me off. Yeah, it was unnecessarily. Um, uh, you know, it but, happens. You know, it, it it's happens, annoying, it but um, yeah, I saw this movie. I saw this when it came out, and I've not seen it since. I remember it being uh, an incredibly. Uh, hypnotic kind of film and I remember mm. just kind of watching it and just letting it kind of wash over me and then kind of not feeling like it had a lasting effect after all that. Yeah. And I, I think it's one of those things that I think I'd go back to as someone older. I didn't watch it at the time. I reckon I watched it when I, you know probably five or six years after after the fact. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it would def- definitely be worth going back to now because I love, like, I love Lost in Translation. Like, I it's think on it's- one of the streamings, if not both. Um, oh, okay. I think, and because I started streaming it probably a few weeks ago, I was just like, oh, I should sit down and just yeah. watch this again, sure, you sure, know. Sure. And then for whatever reason, I didn't end up finishing it. But um, you know, it's great. Obvi- uh, what Kathleen Turner and uh, oh, James Woods. I was about are to say, I couldn't, couldn't remember who the dad was. And yeah, they're Woods. both fantastic as well. And yeah. it's one of the last sort of one of the last roles that you see Kathleen Turner in like that for quite a long time. Okay, like, yeah, she, sure. She isn't in much, and I no, I loved no. her in the eighties. You know, she was yeah. she was the perfect callback to the like thirties, forties, like siren. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see so that. yeah. Anyway, awesome. Yeah, we'll have to. I'll have to get back on that one. I think. For sure. Number eight. Number eight. We're going to do our number eights and we're going to take a little break and we're okay. going to play again. My number eight is so weird. Oh, okay, my number you, eight you is go. really weird All right, too. great. Number eight <gasps> what is if just it's the number. the same number no, eight? it won't be. It won't There's be. no way. Okay. My number eight is a movie called Payback. <laughs> oh, nah, that was never going to be on my list. <laughs> what? Yeah. Mel Gibson Payback? Mel Gibson Payback. I, Who directed that? Uh, Brian uh, Hel- Hel- Helgeland. Helgeland? <gasps> Hegland. Hegland. What else did he do? Uh, not a lot. He's oh. a writer predominantly. Um, and I think one of the other things he directed was that uh, that Sin Eater movie. Well, what's that? With I- um, <laughs> Heath Ledger. Oh, yeah. It was... Um, Good old Sin Eater. It was like a... Oh, he directed the, A Knight's Tale. So he had... He did it... Oh, is he the guy that's done like three or four Ledger films? Is there another bigger Ledger film in there? Uh no. no, that was he did Knight's Tale and then a Sin Eater, the Sin Eater, which was like a religious thriller, oh. also called The Order. It had an American title. Uh, since then, he's gone and done Forty Two, that baseball baseball movie. Didn't see and it. And Legend, the movie where uh, Tom Hardy played twins, the the oh. criminal twins. Oh, yep. Payback is an interesting choice. I know I can acknowledge that it is not a particularly great film. I have seen this movie. So many times. Really? Yeah. I think it 
it's it, it was I think just, it miss I missed it. It was just a default honest. kind of like when I needed like something in my five weeklies and I just wanted a, a nice, uh, not a nice because it's not a nice film at all. When I wanted like an action film that kind of it would feed that part of me, like a good action film. Yeah. I would pick this because I, I knew it well and can I you, knew the action beats were really can effective. Can you tell me what the plot of Payback is? So Payback is Mel Gibson plays a character that gets, um, he's a criminal and he gets um, betrayed by w- one of his partners and gets shot and left for dead. Right. Except he doesn't die. Oh. And so he... Gets payback? Goes, he goes yep. to get payback <laughs> and gets his money back. There's an interesting story with this film, though, is that for a very long time, there was this version of the film. And in 2006, they decided to release a director's cut. Oh. So apparently the version that I had watched 40,000 times was not the director's vision. Fascinating. So I have the Blu-ray now that has both of them on it, and I've watched the director's cut, and I don't think it's as good. But I don't know if that's just my like mm. uh, familiarity it's hard with to the know, original. Isn't it sometimes, yeah. yeah, there are a few director's cuts that I really don't like. Amadeus is one of them. Oh, I can't, I can't tell the difference to be honest. I don't think I ever saw it the has original. Extra scenes that I don't like about Salieri, like. It's more, there's more sex stuff with Salieri and something else. Like, and I'm just like, these were entirely unnecessary. The other one is Terminator 2. Don't like uh, that director's look, I'm, cut. I'm fine without those scenes. Yeah. Like, I don't think all they that, add like, or him add or. smiling and all that nonsense. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. No, I don't, yeah. I, I, I don't think it particularly hurts it, but I, I can see where you're going from. I, I was like... not expecting that film to be on your list at all. It there you not go. crossed my mind in any way. Do you so... know what? It's, it's really effective. It's very yeah. sleek. It's very. Mel Gibson is doing, um, like. It's it's a movie with where your protagonist is an unlikable character, and that's mm. it's kind of rare that they allowed it to be that way. Right? Okay. Um, he's mean. He's awful. He kind of he you know. But you kind of love it though. Is <sighs> well, it kind of like because in Taken he's like awful, but it's great. Like is in that, Taken. Taken. Liam Neeson. He just kills a whole lot of people. He's so like, lovely <laughs> to his daughter. But the, okay, so <laughs> the daughter there, there is actually on. no redeeming quality to to Mel Gibson. So he doesn't even film. have a child. No, there's no kid. There's none of that nonsense. Okay, now I really want to um, see it. That sounds really. He's kind cool. of awful to his ex girlfriend. Like um, he finds her like, and she's been. She's either over OD'd or something, and he basically wakes her up to to like give her a hard time. And is fight, it and is it like R rated? Do you think? I think it was R. It's, it's R or MA, um, but it's but it's kind of a it's kind of black comedy though. So you you kind of you laugh almost at some of the awful things he's doing because okay. it's so because he so relishes it. Yeah, um, no, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was so this original version. Um, kind of. It's not like it has a happy ending, but it has a kind of a satisfying ending in a degree. Whereas the director's cut kind of uh, switches that up. The director's cut takes away a lot of the tongue-in-cheekness of it mm. and turns it into a bit more of a straight kind of. There's no fun to be had. Yeah. Um, which I don't know if that is more effective or less effective. Like I said, I like the movie that was released in '99. I think okay. it's really effective. Great. It's got this really great um color palette. As in, it's quite muted and got a lot of silvers and blues kind of run th- running through. Do you know it. what like city it's shot in? Or? No, I don't. To be mm. honest, I could find probably find that out pretty quickly. But um, yeah, cool. Of all things, I th- figured that would be a, an, an an interesting choice. It is. Yeah. I'm fascinated. We do my eight now, right? Yeah. Okay. My eight is Disney's Tarzan. Oh, <laughs> no, good choice. Is that on your list? It's not. Do you know why? Because I haven't seen it. <gasps> it's one of those Disney ones that just went a little bit past my time. Oh, my gosh. I know all oh, the songs from it because I love it. Phil Collins. It's so, oh, that's the thing. It, I mean, it has the most beautiful soundtrack yeah. ever. Um, there are so many things I like about the film. I think mostly it's the soundtrack. Uh, secondly, I love the animation. I remember it was Toy Story had come out the year or two years beforehand. Yeah. And that had changed the rules for Disney. So Toy Story came in. Disney was no longer about romances or animation in the um, drawn animation. It mm-hmm. was like, um, well, actually it was Pixar. So Pixar changed it. Disney then obviously got on board with Toy Story 2. But, sure. um, and suddenly... Like kids' films were about friendships and parenthood and all this other sort of stuff. Whereas I 
was a young girl growing up on pure romance. Like, sure. And that was what Disney was to me. Yeah. Tarzan was the last of that kind of, of those films, basically. So was it, it the was, last one? What was hap- uh, What was the, the next year's Disney feature? Was that I don't know. Emperor's New Groove, maybe? Well, well, yeah, I think that there's a, yeah, there's a string of like, eh. It but was I mean, it was such a it was such an easily definable time of Disney though where they yeah. went from their Hercules that kind of era and I I think you might be right Tarzan might be the last I think one it is before because it became all of Aladdin and Little Mermaid Lion King not entirely it's not really a romance there is a big romance in it but yeah. I mean uh, Pocahontas oh even Hercules, just the, the um, yeah. even just the idea of the whole. Like we're gonna make it a musical. We're gonna hire these really like famous composers. We're gonna treat it like it's a musical. Yeah. Whereas, and I think Tarzan might have been the last one before they started yeah. kind of dr- kind of distancing themselves from that. Like their movies will always have songs in them, but they didn't mm. treat it the same way. Like, well, that's it. and the thing is, Tarzan was a different kind of musical because the characters didn't sing their songs really. Like, well, that's it. Which Phil Collins sang a lot of the yeah. songs. The mother gorilla sings a little bit. But um, I think it's a beautiful story. Every time I started, I burst into tears. <laughs> um, I I like the mini driver plays Jane in sure. it. And she just, she's perfect. She's got like her, this gorgeous English accent that I, I feel like you voice. don't get to hear mini driver's real accent enough yeah. or something. No, I don't true. know. She's got a gorgeous voice and she is. This she's like this nerdy, silly, clumsy girl, and he is this like sort of man with like complete control of all things, but no language. Like yeah, that and it, it's just it's a really great again like fish out of water on both sides, and um yeah it's a uh, and of course but it has this this other sort of very similar to the Lion King arc when he's kind of expected like he, the. He was adopted by the sort of chief um, gorilla, like the mm-hmm. alpha male, and his, uh, well, I think all of the girls are his girlfriends. Sure. But anyway, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, he, you know, there are all these other expectations about how he's not really one of them, and yet he is able to command certain things that they can't do. And yep. yeah, and it, it's, you know, it's still got this really beautiful stuff going on about family and place and preservation. And, but yeah, but that Phil Collins soundtrack, like, I, I still, I put it on at work often and I drive oh, nice. all of the boys absolutely mad with it. But me and Cindy, the only other girl, hi, Cindy, you're not listening to this, but I'm going to tell you to <laughs> because I'm talking about Tarzan. Like, we'll put this soundtrack on and be so happy. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree. That score is um, is out of control good. And Phil Collins is one of the greats, yeah, one of the all-time he greats. Is. absolutely. Excellent, excellent. Well, that was our number eight. Do you want we're going to break for a little game? I'm excited. So why don't we do your game first? Okay, my game first. So why don't you explain the rules to your game? Okay, the rules to my game is I'm going to do a quote from a movie, mm-hmm. and you have to say that movie. <laughs> You have okay. to tell me what the movie okay. is. Okay, I'm really hoping now, look, that I don't embarrass no, 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 myself no. here. Listen, some of them are easy and some of them, to be perfectly honest, we've mentioned already. Ah, so, all right, here we go. I'm just going to start you Hopefully off with the basic. Hopefully it's nothing from my top ten list. And I'm going to do all the impressions. I'm going to try anyway. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> I see dead people. Ah, yes. Sixth sense. Okay, ding, ding, ding. Ding, Good. ding, ding. Moving on. Moving on. Human beings are a disease, a cancer of this planet. Ooh. You're a plague, and we are the cure. Well done. Uh, this might be coming up shortly, I feel. Oh. That would be the Matrix. It is the Matrix. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. All right. Um, <laughs> and this bag was like. Dancing with me. <laughs> well done. Yeah. That is American Beauty. Is his name? What is his name? I don't is it Richie? I don't oh, know. I don't know. Say it's Richie. I don't know. I feel like that's so wrong. Hang on. I'm going to find out now. Okay. This Fuck next one's bag. like going to be my worst impression, by the way. Okay. Because I just can't do it. All right. All right. By Grabthar's hammer, by the sons of Warvan, you shall be avenged. Not bad. Yeah, it was terrible. Not I can't bad. do Alan Rickman. He's yeah. just I'm like I'm six octaves above him. Like <laughs> uh, that was that, <laughs> that was, was terrible. That, that was, was Galaxy Quest. That was Galaxy Quest. Uh, his name is Ricky Fitz. 
Oh, wow. Okay. What a name. Ricky Fitz. All right. This is another one that we've talked about already. All right. We're doing well. And this one time at band camp. Hey. <laughs> yeah. That is American Pie. That is American Pie. Um, this doing one. Good. Doing good. I'm glad I haven't fucked this any This one of I get up. to really do a performance for okay, as well. Yeah, let's sell it for the back row. <clears throat> I'm also just a girl. Oh. Standing in front of a boy. <gasps> Asking him to love her. Oh, that was sweet. That was so lovely. That was a uh, Notting Hill. I that believe. is Notting Hill. Yeah, I've ding, not ding, seen ding, that ding. movie, but I know that quote. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay, I'm glad you haven't seen it because I had a fear that it would be on your list no, if you had. No, no, no. I'm Thrilled. Great, because I... Considering how much I hated Four Weddings and a Funeral. Oh, I'm, thank I'm, you. I'm oh, ready. you have no idea how oh. good it is to hear that. All right, great. <laughs> I'm not ready to uh, watch Notting Hill just yet. Okay, this one, it's a little bit of a musical one and Ooh, it's uh, very rude. Shut your fucking face, Uncle Fucker. <laughs> uh, that is South Park, bigger, longer, uncut, That's and that correct. was that was oh, that was so close to being my big dumb comedy. It's on my list, oh, actually. Yeah. yeah, ding, 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 ding. Okay, um, okay, this is a slightly obscure, but hopefully yep. you'll know it. Um, no pleasure, no rapture, no exquisite sin greater than central air. Central air or sensual air? Central air. Central air. Of all the, it was. It's such a quotable film, but it was actually really hard to narrow anything down. Um, I'm looking through. I'll my, give you a clue. Yeah, it's you a might comedy. Have to. Comedy. By a director that I'm not sure if you'd like, but he had. Uh, he's an indie director, big comic book fan. Oh, Dogma? It's Dogma, yes. Hey. Ding, 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 ding. All okay. right. So um, Jason Lee's character says it when he like walks into yes. and he puts the air conditioner on and he thinks that, anyway. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. I only uh, needed a few clues. That was okay. That wasn't okay, this one. Now, this is, I just, look, I went through, for whatever reason, I went through quotes for this film, even though I don't remember it, but I thought maybe Tice will, mm. and I think this is a really great line. Okay. Email is for pedophiles. Is for geeks and pedophiles. Do you know that one? <laughs> Just because of the way you've said e- sorry, it. Sorry, email is for geeks and pedophiles. I'm gonna go out on a limb. Yeah. Because it's just the way you, I think you've said it. Was it election? No, it's oh. cruel intentions. Ah, oh, damn it! Yeah, close. I, oh, I don't know. It's just was I, it, it was such a good line. Did Reese Witherspoon say it in both movies? No, actually, damn I it. think the boy said it. <laughs> um, what's his name? Ryan Phillippe. Ryan Phillippe. Oh, oh, they were together in that movie. They were. Mm. I speculate that she ruined Abby Cornish's career. Completely unrelated to this, Abby but um, Cornish, Australian Abby yeah. Cornish. She had an affair with Ryan Phillippe. No that shit. That ended. Reese and Ryan's marriage. Wow. And I reckon Reese had her blacklisted because Abby Cornish is so super talented and she never broke through and it was shocking because she's gorgeous. She's an incredible actress and I just reckon Hollywood said, no, you don't get to play anymore. Wow, not when you fuck with our darling Reese. That's it. It's a fan theory and I got total respect to Reese. Like, sure. And cool that she can do that, you know? (laughs) Okay, so that was the ninth one. Now Damn I'm going to give you number wrong. 10. Sad. All right, is this another hard one? No, it's actually so obnoxiously easy. And Yeah. You was a people thinking you are going to die? <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't do it. I got that wrong as well. It's, the, the secret you was a thinking you are people going to die? The secret Sith Lord himself. Oh, Jar 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 Binks. come on. That would be a That's Star ridiculous. Wars episode one, The Phantom Menace. It is. Ding, 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 ding. Um, well, nine out of ten ain't bad. Nine hey. out of ten yeah. ain't bad. Yeah. And, uh, man, I have seen Cruel Intentions so many times. I've seen it once, and I just thought, like, it just, like, email is for geeks and pedophiles. I'm just like... That's such a 90s thing to say about email. Like, (laughs) Like the most common form of communication in the world right now. Which is just like like saying hello to someone is what an email is, you know? Exactly. I send more emails than I do speak to people, I'm sure. I I completely agree. Don't ever call me anybody. Just send me a fucking email or text message. That's how. If you want me to respond. That's how you'll get me. Anyway, yeah, my even my Jar Jar was bad. I should have tried a Yoda. I don't uh, know. You like, need to, it needs to get in your throat a little bit more. You need to get the... the yeah. uh, 
No, I can't do it. Uh, I used to get it. Misa! Misa! Yes! That's kind yes! Of stuff. Like yeah. that! Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't. No, I can't do it. Well, I'll well, laugh uh, so much. excellent, excellent. I've enjoyed that game. Thank you, Jemima. It turns out I didn't do as badly as I was hoping I would. Oh. Hang on. <laughs> no, no, that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> I did better than you I did better was, than you thought. Than I was afraid I might do. Okay, great. Why don't we move on? Who's who? Is uh, it well, me? you're going first. It's I me. think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my number seven is a film that where I've already mentioned, so we can now both talk about it. Great. It is The Sixth Sense. Yay! Yay! First M Night film. Well, not the first actually. But no, but I'm not going to watch that. The first breakout M Night film. Yes. I, I look. I really like this movie. Me too. It's still, and I really like him. He's still one of the most interesting, like weird, it's f- exciting directors. Yeah, he can make a shit movie, yeah. and I'm probably going to try and watch it still. And I might think it's shit, but I'm I'm not going to write him off. Like yeah. I'm ready for, and that's why that was so great about Split is because. Oh my God, yeah, did you? Wa- did you have it spoiled for you before you watched it though? Because I couldn't remember. Because you didn't know this. You didn't know the ending. No, but though. I no, but I knew. I knew. Uh, I knew it was a perhaps a distant relative uh-huh, to that uh-huh, film. Uh-huh. Okay. So. Um, oh yeah, we're not going to spoil it yeah. on the air. I, we, me and Nick have already talked yeah. about it. And I had to do a big spoiler warning on the <laughs> thing because I was like, <laughs> "Fuck you, someone." But yeah, so having like knowing that he can, you know, he's had a few misses. Yeah, that's fine. You know, uh, what's uh, what's unfortunate is that for some people, a couple of misses means you never work again. He's managed to push through that wall which I'm I'm happy about because I think we all kind of figured that there was there must be another good one in there somewhere. Yeah, definitely. And so we kept giving him chances and he kept kind of fucking us over with some real with some pretty terrible films. Mm. Um which had some redeeming features in them, but generally generally were pretty awful. Yeah. But we just knew and then the visit was kind of like, okay, maybe you're almost back on the right track and mm. now we split was just fucking so good. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, is like what he, I think what he does the absolute best is, is to create suspense and paranoia yep. and, and tension and doubt. Yep. And I think split is that it, that's, it's 90 minutes of that, you know, oh, yeah. of that kind of terror. And yeah. when he did it with the sixth sense, um, it was incredible. Yeah. And I think we kind of, we underestimate now just how huge that that was. That, oh the, yeah, the explosion of that film. Absolutely, like that it, it made it over a hundred million or something as yeah, well, but, like hundred and eighty million or something. I can't think of a film that has had a similar kind of effect on public consciousness, like. People were walking the streets. Well, there's saying, definitely like one or even two more, like that I will oh, mention. More, tonight. more in the, <laughs> yeah. more in the, like yeah. in, the, in the, in the kind of the, you know, the water cooler conversation sense. Yeah, is that people, people would literally walk up to each other and be like, "Have, have you, you seen, seen this? Oh, okay. I, I won't, I won't spoil, it. Yeah, I won't spoil yeah, yeah. it for you." That's it. Like, that twist th- was very, very, and powerful. that is something that just doesn't happen anymore. Mm. And. Yeah, um, I remember the girl who spoiled it for me, and I asked her to. Okay, because she was like, "I've seen it," and and I'm like, "Okay," and she goes, "There's a really big twist," and I'm like, <sighs> <laughs> well, now, now, you, okay. "Now you have to tell me what it and is." I'm like, "She's like, do you want me to tell you?" Like she was sort of like she had like a hand on mine, and sure. like she's like, "Do you want me to tell you? Like, do you want to go ahead with this?" And I was like, "Yes." <laughs> And then she did, and I was like, "Damn, I wish Damn, I, didn't I wish ask. I hadn't fucking Why done did that." Why did I ask? Anyway, um, I like it. Um, but yeah, this is—is uh, is it? It's still your favorite M Night, or is that gone somewhere no, else no, now? No, 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 no. My favorite. I think we had we this conversation t- last this? time I was here. The Village is my favorite. Oh, that's M. right. And I, yeah. yeah, and I and I was one of the few people that actually really liked that film. Yeah, as well, so. yeah, yeah. No, um, this is for me. This is. I, I can't go past Unbreakable, but this is a very close second Interesting. For me. Mine would go Village, Signs, maybe Unbreakable, this. Sure. Then I didn't What's see amazing, some though, of the is that ones. any of those first four movies would rank very highly in a top ten of that year for me. Yeah, like he absolutely. Made, he, to me, he made four fucking great movies. Mm. Um, Village may be the least of that. I'd probably say Village is a very good movie. Um, Interesting. For me. Still, and it's just my favorite. No, no, no. Yeah. I get it. I, it, it actually has some of my favorite moments, M Night moments in it. Mm. I think 
the the bit with um, Joaquin Phoenix grabbing her hand, her hand yeah. in the in the in all the noise and pain. My friend, is probably one of his best moments he's ever directed. My friend literally sent me a video just of that scene the other day, just filming it on his computer with his <laughs> phone and just like texted it to me. Lovely. Like he's That's like, awesome. Look, this is what I'm watching. And just that scene, yeah. and, like it is the best. Yeah, and uh, I think anything with adding William Hurt to anything kind True. of adds yeah. to the to the awesomeness of it. He's very special. I just love his fucking voice. I yeah. could listen to him talk eh, just all day long. He's I a beautiful his voice. voice. Um, all right, well, cause let's, uh, let's move on because everyone knows how fucking good that movie is. Yeah, um, right? Everyone knows. So okay. you, what's your number seven? We're on seven, are we? Yes. Oh, okay. I switched these as well. Oh, you did a switch. I switched six and seven. So seven is now... Toy Story 2. Hey, Yay! the second of our revisits. Yes. Yes. Lo- I love Did it make it on your list? It was my no, number that 11. Was your, it was sorry, my, that was, was your 11. Yeah. Highly commended performance, mm-hmm. um, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I love this trilogy, so I kind of rank them as, as, a, as a complete kind of package. Okay. Really. I, yeah, look, I, I like the trilogy a lot too. I think that the special thing about Toy Story 2 is that it's one of the rare, it's one, of, I think it's a, better film than the first Toy Story. Yep. And I think that it is, you know, that is a rarity I'd when agree. a sequel can improve upon yeah, yeah, something for sure. and that that is incredibly significant. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, the, think the, I think both two and three are better than the first one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the um, the song, the, oh, it's a terribly yeah, sad song. Yeah, When She song. Loved Me. Yeah, When She Loved Me. Like, I still, like... My friend put that on the car when I was driving, like interstate, and yeah. I was like, "No, just turn it off. I don't want to start crying." Like <laughs> that, that, that sequence is like it, it's it it's comparable to that first five minutes of Up in terms yeah. of how how much emotional kind of mm. mileage you can get out of a five minute sequence. Like, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's just harrowing. But also the idea as well that she is uh, that the, the, there's a trauma here, and it's kind of like. You know, I think the first Toy Story is like, you know, it's a dick measuring contest between yeah, yeah. like, you know, one one toy and another or like the idea of the cowboy and the spaceman and like yes. which is the greatest fabled American hero or whatever. Yeah. Like, and, you know, this is that that's uh, Toy Story 2 is just more about like, uh, I don't know. Well, uh, like obviously the idea of like being left behind yeah. or past traumas coming back to hurt you and it's a lot more about friendship as like this big collective kind of thing and you know all inclusive and yeah like don't there you know there's no choices that have to be made like everyone can be happy together like if they want to try you know that kind of thing yeah for sure no it's um yeah this what they managed to do with that with really just that whole trilogy is kind of i you know it's going to be remembered for a long time. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, not only for its storytelling kind of finesse, because they're fucking, like, they are tight as a drum, those yeah. films, story-wise. But um, the animation stuff that they did is just out of control good. It's beautiful. Um, it's, it's beautiful to look at. And they're such iconic characters. And it's... Uh, and like, they're so textured. Like, yeah. They're so beautifully textured. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. And it's just, you know, that's just kind of like... Everyone knows how fucking good the Toy Story movies yeah. are. It's kind of just yeah. like, just, you know, and if, if anything, just go and watch them again because you might have forgotten just how fucking great they are. That's and it. And every now and then you have to just kind of, you know, when you're scrolling through stuff and you're like, oh, yeah, I could watch Toy Story. It's like, fucking watch Toy Story, man, yeah. because it's better than 99% of the other shit that's probably floating that's around it. on in your DVD collection. Yeah. And Toy Story 2, particularly good. Yeah. You know? Easily. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Number right. six. six. My number six. Um, we're going to start smashing through a few of these because we're, okay, we're yep, taking sorry, time. Okay, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, yep. don't be silly. Um, I'm loving sorry, the conversation. I don't conversation. have a lot to say about my number six. So no, that's me totally neither, fine. actually. All right. Uh, my number six is like possibly the only Australian film that would ever end up in any of these lists whatsoever. Wow. Um, like for any year ever. Because I, have, I have, I've got, I don't like I a lot of Australian I even tried to films. look up what films were released this year and I could not oh. like hit on, oh, I know what it is. There was this one that I love. Uh, I know what it is. And it's two yeah, hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Two Hands is it's still probably the the best Australian film I've ever seen. I okay, think. and no. I know I know that's not a, a particularly popular opinion, but it just it this is and look this is the this is a film very much of the nineties. It it was influenced. It's Pulp Fiction, but in Definitely. Australia, yeah. Um, and look, it's you know it it glorifies that criminality. It makes them funny and cool. Yeah. Um, it's kind of you know it's it's mixed timelines. It's it's. Uh, you know, little stories here and there of different people. You've got, you know, Brian Brown doing an incredibly lovable but hideous person. Mm. Um, 
all the things that Tarantino make a staple. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, yet it 100% worked for me. And I think with Heath Ledger, you could see that he was going to be something special. Um, and is this Abby Tucker? It's Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne, of course it yeah. is. Jesus. Love this. Mm. I love this Rose Byrne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with her peroxided hair. With her weird, yeah, yeah. weird peroxide colored hair. And she's like... She's I got, rocked that look in 99. I mentioned that. Like, I had like peroxide kind of, streaks in my hair. It's like just like random yeah. hair ties. Is mm-hmm. it just kind of like we're just going to poke them out wherever just, we want? Yeah. That's what I, I um, seriously had that hairstyle. But yeah. that, that movie is another one of those movies where um, the you get to the ending and it just really kind of you feel exhausted by the movie experience but you feel mm. really kind of it felt really rewarding um you know the the it's the powder finger song kicks in and you know it gives you a chance to kind of Which reflect powder on it. Finger I think, song? Is it, um i'm sorry i don't i have look i saw the film once and again 15 years ago sure like, sure sure yeah um these it's these days these days mm, by powder finger yeah um it just it it just it hit a really particular nerve for me at a particular time, and I think I watched that movie through to you know 2010, probably once a year. Right. Um, I've started the DVD. I just haven't. It's been a really long time since I've seen it, and I'd love to watch it again. And I, I made this. We had I had this small conversation with Nick. Is that you forget that his brother is a zombie and plays a role in the film? Like it's yeah, that kind of movie and where he you, tells the story. He's, the, he's narrating he? it. Yeah. And you, you forget. Like you go to watch this Aussie crime drama and you forget the first scene is a camera panning through the dirt until it reaches a zombie having a cigarette. Going, let me tell you about my brother. Yeah. Or something. And it's like so. It's just got this really odd sense of humor, and it's. It's one, of, and it doesn't try I to be too. I have forgotten that. I, I admire the film just literally in that memory of that's it. it. Yeah, um, because it it catches you off guard. Mm. Um, so, but in a beautiful, in a wonderful way. Like you just yeah. kind of go, oh, yeah, okay, I'm on board. Let's do this. This is going to be great. That's um, it. Um, but yeah, no, I look. I like two hands. It would never make a top ten list in sure. any way at all. But yeah. I haven't watched it recently, so maybe if I yeah, watched it, it again, go. it would. Yeah, you never know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Hey, what's your number six, Jemima? My number six. Now this is a, this is the like. It's the talented Mr. Ripley. Oh, yeah. good choice. It's not on my list. Not on your list. Um, but it, it it's on my list of like what I acknowledge is probably one of the better films of the year. But I've only yeah. seen it once. Objectively good, but meh. Well, I watched it recently. I went on like a Mingella binge. Oh, ah, yeah. And God, there's not really. There's, There's not, not a lot but, worth watching in that in the Mingilla Mingilla uh, binge, is there? Look, there isn't. Cider House Rules. No, is that him? No. No, that's Lassie. No, uh, so he Huddlestrom. didn't make a lot of films. So he, he um, uh, out of Africa, then talented uh, Mr. Ripley, then Cold Mountain, and then Afri- he did in- not. Uh, no, no, out of Africa. Not out of Africa. Oh, English mm. patient. The English patient. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, my bad. What was the one after? No, but out of Mr. Africa Ripley was. Again? Out of Africa is, Out of Africa Sydney, Africa is Pollock, Sydney Pollock, but he produced Mingella's films, ah, so that's the confusion. Okay, yeah, sure, 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 Pollock sure. produced Talented Mr. Ripley and I think Cold Mountain. Oh, Cold Mountain, that's the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cold Mountain, which I adore, obviously, okay, sure. not in the least because Nicole's in it. But this, um, so it was his first film with Jude Law. He made three films with Jude Law. Yep. Breaking and Entering was his last before he died. Um, I love this film. Okay. Like, I... Ah, uh, jeez, I don't know. It's it's really tense. It's really frightening. the The whole thing is this: is you're on board with this guy's secret the whole time, knowing mm. that none of it's true, and you just have to watch as he gets so close to being caught out and busted, and yeah, you have yeah. to just watch him push and push and push to keep his head above water and to make choices as to who, as to at what point is the lie more valuable than the lives of others? Sure. And it is wonderful. And the, I mean, and it's hugely tragic because he ends up, you know, he ends up murdering the man he loves in order to continue pretending for, for no reason, you know? <laughs> and it's, yeah. it's great. Uh, Jude Law is fantastic in it too. I think he got nominated for best supporting actor. I don't know if Damon was nominated that or the following year, but I think he deserved it, and I don't think that I think no, Damon was not nominated. It's a, I don't think that Damon's been able to do. I remember, you know how James Cor- Corbin, Cor- the James guy Corbin. who does the that TV host, what's his name? The 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 late he doesn't do. He doesn't, oh, James Corbin, the yeah Corbin. late late show. Corbin Corbin Corbin. It I is Corbin. Corbin? Right. Um, I think it's Corbin too. 
he does uh matt damon's like career they do like the thing in 10 minutes and it's just like matt damon has like two Corden. Corden, sorry. He has like two iconic roles. Like Matt Damon. Yeah, and when you get yeah, to that's very cool. and it's like you're one of the biggest superstars in the world, but no, you haven't actually made a lot of interesting films or iconic films. And the talent of Mr. Ripley is one of the those non iconic films. Mm. And whether or not it was because he was playing like a gay character or because it was set mostly in Europe that it didn't really have a big American market. Sure. But like, oh, and that obviously it was, they were emerging stars at the time as well. But I just think that it's this great, fun, scary movie. And it's so beautiful. Like yeah. I watched it and I'm like, I've got to, I've got to go to Italy. Like I just, why haven't I been I rem- there yet? Yeah, I remember a big part of it, of my enjoyment of that film was, yeah, the cinematography is just mm. stunning. It's beautiful. Yeah. The music's terrifying. The, it's just... I think it. Um, yeah. I don't think it was marketed well, mm. though, because I remember watching it and having the realization hit me that I'm watching a thriller. Yeah. Before, like, not when I started watching it. Like, it came like a little way into it mm. when I was like, "Oh God, no! This is not the movie I was prepared That's to it. be watching at all." And I think as well, though, is that you don't. I mean, like, it's an old Patricia Highsmith wrote it back in like the fifties or yeah, something sure. like that, and it's had previous adaptations as well. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, Elaine Delon did a French version. Oh, okay. It's called Something Moon. Anyway. Sure. Um, but what I think is interesting is uh, that the film doesn't begin as a thriller in any way. Like you, it's true, yeah. you assume that it's going to be like a love triangle or something like yeah. that, which it is, but that isn't – not in the way that you no, think it's no, going to be, obviously. Yeah. And – yeah, no, it is. It's it is a thriller. It's a horror thriller, like yeah. more than anything. And it's, I, it's um, a terrifying yeah, character. Yeah, he, he is, but also so so sympathetic still. Like yeah, that he, you watch him spiral out of control, and he doesn't. You know, you see that it, it that whatever is happening that it has taken over to a point that like there's no way that his person can be held together anymore. Sure, and I think that Damon does that. So 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 well. Anyway. Yeah, I have to. Yeah. I have to rewatch that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I, I I remember feeling like maybe it wasn't Damon's best work, but I can't remember it to be honest. I just I don't know why I have that no. memory. Yeah, um, I love it. Cold Mountain is better, but okay. yeah, that, yeah, love it. All right, cool. I've definitely not seen Cold Mountain. I stayed away from that. <gasps> yeah, it, it was. It, it's. It just seemed like not my bag at all. Watch it. You I'll will give it a go. ball your I will, eyes uh, out. I do like a good movie yeah. cry. That's what I do well. Hey, I'm gonna do my number five. All right, we're on the home stretch. Ooh, we're on the home it? stretch. That's okay. what we've got our last five to go. This is gonna be fun. Um, my number five is a movie by. I've I've had this conversation with Nick that if I had to choose on any given day my favorite director, this man might be the man. Um, simply because when I think about four of his films, I rank them highly in my favourite films of all time. Oh, maybe I know what it is. And that man is Oliver Stone. And wow, the didn't film, know that. No, the he film, had a movie that year? He did. It's not one of his greatest, but I, it's a film that I cannot help but love sick because I've seen it so many times and it's grown on me like crazy, and that's Any Given Sunday. <gasps> I did not know that was an Oliver Stone film. It is. Uh, tell me about it. I well, get that so, mixed up with a couple of other films of a sim- similar name. Sure, sure. This is the one with Al Pacino playing the football coach, um, the American football coach for the for the um, uh, is it the Miami Sharks? I think is the name of the team. Um, and so he is kind of on the on the outs. Miami the t- Dolphins? No, because it's a fake. Oh, it's, it's a, a fake, fake team. team. Yeah, because um, they weren't allowed to get because they they're not portrayed in the no- most uh, pleasant light. So the NFL disallowed actual team names and representation and stuff like and that. And yet Ace Ventura got away with it. <laughs> exactly. I guess because they had an actual football player, football player in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so Al Pacino is a coach on the way out. The manager is played... The manager of the team is played by Cameron Diaz. Um, ah, yeah. And she took over from her dad, who had a, a kind of an unspoken... A, a long-term unspoken relationship with... Uh, Al Pacino in the sense that they, he would never fire him. It was like just a handshake that they were they were going. Right. He was going to be the coach okay. as long as he wanted. She's trying to get him out though. Mm-hmm. She doesn't like him. His main quarterback goes down, and Jamie Fox is the third stringer, 
who gets called up to to cover and ends up being a superstar and it's their clashing and it's just it's the season of this team and the 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 energy boiling over and um I love it because it's it's fucking crazy for starters like it this is Oliver Stone at the peak of his just losing it it was before he got boring with like <laughs> stuff like World Trade Center um and uh like now he's done like W and that kind of shit where I'm just oh, like that Snowden don't, film was uh, which, so and I just dull. don't care yeah. about those mm. kind of things I'm and and it was you know he it was building up through like um my favorites are always going to be like Platoon Born on the 4th of July JFK that little run there yeah. I think is just JFK is Born on the 4th of so July my two good. favorites easy um yeah. yeah and so this is he's really at the peak of his just fucking craziness like he must he's on all the drugs and it, it the energy through this film it's it's nearly three hours long and it never lets up it's just intensity all the way through he obviously loves football as a sport and he does this thing where he um it's obviously the sport that he that he feels is the most kind of has the most mythical kind of property to it because he, he 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 makes it seem like this mythical sport like this clashing of great men and it's all really kind of um, yeah, overblown and ridiculous and theatrical, and I just fucking love it. I right. like, I just think it's batshit crazy and so entertaining. And Pacino gives it a really, really great performance. It's peak who are, but yeah, it's, right. but yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. No, that's great. Um, and it's got one of the it's you know like because I love sports movies, I've watched all those. I watch like countdowns for the best sports speeches and shit like that. Like I just love that stuff. Okay. And this is one that ranks very high. There's a speech he does towards the like the the big speech towards the end of the film. It's it's fucking great. It's he just he acts the shit out of it. I have no point of reference for this film at all. I did not even know that it was about football. There you go. I assumed it was some kind of crime movie not directed by <laughs> Oliver Stone at there you all. Go. So it's it's yeah. it's almost worth watching just to see how crazy things got from yeah. all, for Oliver Stone, Stone at that time. He he he's always interested me and I'm very much looking forward to his Putin interviews. Oh my god, I so, can't like Yeah. When I heard that that was happening it just made so much sense and at the same I got so excited at the same yeah. time I was like I have to fucking see that. That's, that's going to be that's going to be so incredible. But of all the people in the world of course, it's Oliver Stone. Like, yeah, 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 absolutely. So that'll be that'll be good. Yeah, get on it. All um, right. You're, so, am I doing five? You're now? on five. Wow, we got to five already. Yeah. Mine is. Shut your fucking face, hey. Uncle Fucker. It's like, very good. Oh, uh, I now listen. My dad in 1997. I yes. remember it. I remember the day when he took me into the living room and he sat me down in front of the TV and he goes, "I watched this show last week." You're allowed to watch it. Right. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then he left the room sure. because my dad could never watch extreme content with me in the room. He made it, it was very uncomfortable for him, oh, okay. except for like action movies, sure, like sure, sure. that kind of violence. But when there were like sex jokes or like okay. inappropriate. So like, he's happy for you to watch it. He just didn't want to be in the same room with you. Right? Yes. Oh, okay. Strange thing. But I um, remember specifically, he was like, here, watch this. You might like it. Yeah. And it's like 930 at night. Like, sure. I, I, and I'm 10 years old. I shouldn't even be up. Anyway, whatever. I was badly parented. Um, and I watched it and it it was like, you know, a hole had been torn out in the sky. Yeah. Like South was it, Park was... Was it Cartman Gets an Anal Probe? Eh, I think so. Or it or was the, it the Pink anal, Eye Zombie gets, one. Is that the Anal Probe one as well? I think it, it's when they had anal the probe Pink Eye. Anal Probe is the first episode. No. So it was the second episode, which is the Pink Eye that is caused... By what? I don't remember. Oh, because there's zombies. It's the zombie pink eye one. Like, they think that everyone has pink eye, but there's actually zombies eating people. Like, anyway. (laughs) It's, (laughs) um, yeah, anyway. So, obviously, when Bigger, Longer, and Uncut came out, that was MA rated here. And Dad took us all to see it. And we'd never heard the F word so many times in our lives. I can imagine, because the first song is not a, it's that, like, it's Stan walking around yeah, South the first Park song is all singing. Like, yeah, it's a it's lovely amazing. like it's, yeah. mountain ballad introducing yeah. you to the town. And the next song is Shut Your Fucking Face, Uncle yeah. Fucker. And like <laughs> I I was just like it I was just lit up. Like it was just I was like, This is 
the greatest, most awful thing at the same yep. time. I don't know how to feel about it, but it was sensational to me. Yes. Like, uh, uh, I just, and I, I love it. I love the jokes. I still got all the jokes as a kid. Like, nothing's changed between the the content of that those yeah. South Park episodes or that South Park film between then and now. Like, if I watch, like, Looney Tunes, I'm like, oh, Oh, I get it now. Like, or even Simpsons jokes, it took me years to get. But for what it, South Park was just really basic, like dumb as gross, like fantastic humor. Yeah. And I was like, I- I'm on board. It, I was and it's on just board. it's yeah, satire 100%. in a way that is just so pure. And they know what they're yeah. doing. And I, I, it was, it was the most I think I've, I was, I could not control my laughter. Like yeah. to the point where. I was missing three quarters of that film because I was just in hysterics yeah. that I needed to uh, like, I, I actually didn't see it at the, fi- at the cinemas. I, the first time I saw it was on, um, was on video and we had to s- stop it because I was, just, I'm, I'm finding this too fucking hilarious. Mm. And it was the, it was the, it was such a fucking face yeah. that had me just in stitches. It I was could the not best. And every kid at school happening. would be like singing it at each other yeah. and like, and it was, it was so dirty. It was so bad. And it was just like, you have no idea how liberating saying fuck can be. Like, oh, it, and it, it, just, it just, it really it can did really that, didn't it? set you off, like in, in ways that you just can't imagine. No, and, it, yeah. And it's just like, I can't believe they did this. And I'm so glad that they did. So look that, uh, look again, my love of Trey Parker and Matt Stone has just never died. They're two of my favorite people. Team America, I was working at a cinema when that came yeah. out and I just saw it four times. Like just, and I would go back and just ball my eyes out like yeah. laughing i remember literally wetting my pants like you know <laughs> like i just team you know. america became like uh, uh my group's like drunken yeah. like what do we put on when we're all just fucked up and we want to laugh uh, and it was that and because it used to be basketball and then when team america uh, exactly. came out it yeah. was like it graduated yeah. to team america perfect um <laughs> anyway. so yeah. yeah that's my um no that's good my choice number five. good choice and um like special shout out to their songwriting abilities which uh, yeah on they were nominated for blame canada as well they that lost was... it to phil collins and then they made an episode in which he was walking around holding his oscar saying you shouldn't make fun of retarded people <laughs> and then someone pointed at him and laughed or something like that it was <laughs> it was some it was some gross joke it yeah. was the first episode with timmy in it um uh, when he joins yeah. the lords of the underworld okay. oh so good but they were just like they lost it and that was that whole thing with south park that they did that thing when they you know, they turned around an episode in six days. Yeah. So as soon as they lost that Oscar, Phil Collins was in the show yeah. holding look, and, it know, like in, as we, revenge. You knew that that was going to happen. And for yeah. some reason, you, you never hated those guys. Like Phil no. Collins is a nice guy. Like Phil Collins is, a, is I'm well, sure, is a lovely guy. Well, the funny thing is that when I saw that, like my attitude towards Phil Collins, like only recently in the last like few years did I move to being like, I love Phil Collins right? because South Park have made fun of him sure. and I was angry at him for taking their Oscar. And it was ridiculous. <laughs> for what reason? I have no idea. This is the power of Robin South Williams Park. performed the song at yes, the Oscars as well. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, as a I Canadian, think... it was his, you know. Yeah. I can't yeah. remember why they decided they couldn't use, they didn't want to use the cartoon voice or... The, the the woman that voices that voices Cartman's mum? Yeah, yeah. Is it Cartman's mum? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yep. Sheila. Um Yeah. Mm. Good story though. She doesn't do it anymore. She did she die? I, I think she did. I haven't. I'm gonna be I honest. I think the actors I, that I've did only the voices watched scattered episodes of for the most last of maybe the women died um, after about season four. Oh. So an, a, another woman came okay, in to do sure. all the voices. Anyway, that's not the point. That woman. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, whoops. Sad times, but way to bring down the mood, Jamal. So, are we going to um, keep going? Yeah, we're going to do yeah. one more, right, and then we're going to take a little right, break great, for, great. for another game. So, I'll do num- my number four. Well, I yeah. hope that we. I hope we. Maybe we're not going to sync up for anything. Is maybe. that sad? I think we're going to definitely sync up on a few. How? But or maybe not. No, but I mean, because are your are your last four really random or? No. Two of my last four, I think you'll have. Really? Yeah. Um, and this might be one of them. My number four is The Matrix. Do you have The Matrix? I don't. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right. Oh, no, but I still want to talk about it, obviously, sure. because I, I just like, I, it just hasn't, it hasn't aged well as a no, film for me. Well. And no, I, I, still... I don't think it aged well for anybody. Like, 
And it was yeah. because nerd culture over took over that the black trench coat. Oh um, hell yeah! Thing. I and still became, know guys that are like nearly forty who are rocking that look, and I'm like, the Neo. dudes, no. It's just and it, like it's so lame now. You watch them and it's like so you watch lame. them in their in their like their leather get up and their cool sunnies and all yeah. this kind, of, and you're just like, gosh, you just look ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but you know that's that's evolution of time. Yeah. Really, we can't. It can't be helped. It's I like s- yeah. you look at any movie from the eighties that people thought they looked cool and they look fucking ridiculous. So. Well, the Matrix is like a first of so many great, important, giant events. Like uh, I 100%. think, and yeah. for me, uh, I think that it was the beginning of the huge sort of sci-fi dystopia uh, that. Um, I think the 90s actually had a really light vision of the future comparatively and that when The Matrix came in, we have never seen a bright future since. It's a good point. Essentially. No, you're like, right about that. Um, and I mean, it's not my point. A friend of mine pointed it out when I was like, hey, remember how Bill and Ted was like a fun idea in the future? And I thought it was interesting that Bill and Ted also has Keanu Reeves in it too. Oh, yeah, good point. Um, or even Back to the Future. It's like, oh, the future's fun. We have hoverboards and stuff. And it's like now we're just like the future's messed up. Like, yeah. And well, Humans are ruining the world. And, you know, I, of course, I think that's true. But e- there, isn't a, there isn't a utopia in the future anymore. That doesn't exist. No, it's, it's very true. No. It's very true. Um, yeah, then, well, I mean... That that uh, I can, I remember the moment watching that film when he wakes up and like if 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 I had been my own house I would have got up and been like what yeah. <laughs> like what is going on mm-hmm. like it was just you 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 like is everyone fucking watching this shit like this is fucking incredible man he's tearing out shit and he's fucking like like it's it just it. It changed absolutely everything about yeah. what we as an audience um, c- can come to expect in a, cine- in, a, in a cinema. Yeah. Like, we had the rug absolutely ripped out from under us. And that's not even like... I'm not talking about like a twist ending or something like that. It's a completely different thing. It's that a concept of a movie, we went in and it told us that our existence was not real. Yeah. And I... I don't I'm, look. I don't want to say that's the first time that's ever happened, but it's the first time for me. It's my first acknowledgement of that that you could use our reality as a storytelling tool against us. Totally. I, and again, it's that American Beauty monotony, boring, you know, office job or whatever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. But he really yeah. wants to be like a secret hacker. That's it. Um, oh, like, oh. All this shit, like, and, nerdy. Yeah, it, it's so, and look, it did it, for a little while. It did kind of glorify being intelligent, which is, you know, yeah. that's actually something that I think we still have trouble with. Um, mm. We're getting a lot better at it, I think, as a, as a culture. But you know, back then, especially the nerds, you're you're a fucking nerd. Like that was yeah. a very common kind of you know put down of anyone that was intelligent. Um, at least this kind of made the intelligent people the fucking badasses yeah. of this situation. Or even the idea of computers being something interesting. Yeah. Like, not just boring learning tools or yeah. word processors well, or whatever. It. Like, it was like, we can be transported. Like, this We're basically is a... super- superheroes that yeah. have computers. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, computers. there's an energy here. Like, we can rewrite the existence, you know, inside yeah. this... Matrix, yeah. you know, yeah. And look, and other than, uh, you know, aside from all the all that kind of stuff as well, it's just fucking, like, the action sequences are incredibly good. Yeah. Um, it was that merging of, it was that Hong Kong cinema influence that I don't think would had really kind of broken through to mainstream Hollywood. Absolutely. Um, and, it, you know, from then on we had imitation upon imitation. Anytime there was an action movie, it was, like, choreographed by... The guy that choreographed The Matrix, and it was yep. like, holy shit, well, we better fucking, you know, we've got... And then that led into the kind of, you know, the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon kind of stuff, where yep. it, it... And then that kind Which of, is the following year, I Which think. was, yeah, yeah, I think 2001, and then it would be like... It, so every action movie had like a, a an, an an Asian cinema staple as its choreographer. Yeah. And it would, you know, you couldn't just watch... We talked about this with Rush Hour as well, that yeah, there was right. this sort of golden Hong Kong yeah. merging sort exactly. of time too. Well, you couldn't have an action film anymore where they would just kind of punch each other clumsily. You yeah. Know, like a, you, you couldn't have a John McClane anymore. No. They had to be like these fucking, you know, martial, martial artists. artists yeah. Freaks. 
um, and it was the speed of it. It was the, the everything was pacey. It was all like you had to watch the sickest moves there and all that kind of stuff. And the photography, of course, was revolutionary. Yes, they were the I don't know what they call it, but the bullet time. Bullet time. Yeah. So this is the multi-camera setup, yep. all you know, a three sixty degree setup of a camera. Yep. And then. Yeah. And it's amazing to to think of those things. Like who Absolutely. to actually even just go, hey, what if we try this? Yeah. Um, and it, like the effect is so, it's still impressive. Like you it watch is. it now and it's still really, really effective. And of course, it followed on in each film. I remember Charlie's Angels is a perfect example. Like oh God, all of yeah. the girls were up like, you know, yeah. half like half in the air and the camera would Crane like movements. pan around yeah. them and then, you know, they'd do a big kick and, oh, yeah. Yes, uh, look, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're not breaking new ground when we talk about this. This is, no. and it's just, but, you know, you forget just how influential it was. And, you know, people give it a hard time now because it's like, oh, it's dated or the sequels suck. But it's kind of like you just can't, you can't underestimate how, how important it was. Yeah. Um, all right, well, what's your number four? Because we're, we're going to push along. Just if you haven't seen The Matrix, see it. You've seen, everyone's seen as The Matrix. As you've seen The Matrix, uh, as as you've seen seen the Matrix. we're going to say. My fourth is... Fight Club! Hey, we're going to come back to that All a little right, bit later. That's fine. So, Very do you want to play another game? I or? do want to play another right, game. Yay! Yay! All right, well, the game that I have decided for us to play, Jemima. Yes. It's a bit of an interesting game. We're going to talk about some of the more forgotten films of 1999. Ooh. And I mean universally forgotten. I'm sure there's someone out there that will go, hey, I like that movie. But it's generally, we're talking about those movies that everyone kind of goes, oh, yeah, I remember that. Fucking movie! Okay. Did anyone did anyone see that movie? Oh dear! I'm, I'm worried give you the that synopsis. I didn't see them, but let's find out. Well, I you guess. might not have seen them. I'm going to give you the synopsis, <laughs> oh, and I'm no. going to see if you can guess which gonna... film I'm referring to from 1999 based okay. on this synopsis that I give you. Are you All ready? Right. Yep. Movie number one: <laughs> A police sergeant and a congresswoman both lose their spouses in a plane crash. And they soon discover that their spouses were having an affair with each other. Oh, I do know what this is. Um, do you want tell me when you're ready for clues? Can I have a clue? Stars. Oh, no, don't give me the stars. Oh, is that too much of a clue? Yeah, that's too, early? too much. Do you want the director? I totally, yep. Yeah, give me a the director. director? Sydney Pollack. Oh, no. Oh, I have it. I know what it is, but I... I'll give you one. I'll give you the female lead. Okay. Kristen Scott Thomas. Um, Sydney Pollack, Kristen Scott Thomas. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> you ready I've for the male it. lead? It'll give yeah. it away. Harrison Ford. I just can't think of what it's called. Describe, can you describe the poster to me? No. Oh, it's Random Hearts. Random Hearts. Right, nah. Oh, you see, I know it and I've seen it. This is why. The I Forgotten like Films of 1999. You're right. I do. I did forget. It's, oh, it's it's not forgettable, though. Like, I but I feel like there's definitely another film that has that same plot, though. Oh, yeah, maybe. maybe. I'm going to look into Quite that. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Are you ready for number two? Yeah, I am. Yep. All right. Here we go. Let's see how we go here. Oh, no. I, oh, I hate failing. But, yep. All right. No, you're doing great. This, they're the forgotten films. Yeah, these. This is much harder than the. Yeah. Than, 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 all right. Oh, this is that is a long synopsis. Here we go. <laughs> all right, ready. Haunted by the patients he failed to save, an extremely burned out Manhattan ambulance paramedic fights to Bring maintain. Bring out the dead. Congratulations. Yeah. Bring out the dead. I haven't seen it, but I know it's about an ambulance guy. Yeah. The, I know it was the, released the this year. The long ignored. Scorsese. 1990 film from Martin Scorsese yeah. that everyone forgets that he directs. Everyone talks about how Scorsese is everyone's favorite director. And then you say, have you seen Bringing Out the Dead? And they'll go, what? They're like, what's that? What's that? Mm. Oh, that's that crabby Nicolas Cage movie. Yeah. Why, why it's like Taxi that? Driver in an Ambulance, basically. It's directed by Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you, se- you haven't seen it? Uh, no, I haven't. I, wa- I, will, I will watch it, definitely, because I'm, I'm a fan and um, I'm curious. It's... I'm no. a fan of both Cage and Scorsese, so yeah, yeah, it's um, it's it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't okay. feel like a Scorsese film when you watch it. Interesting. Are you ready for number three? Yes, Let's... I love this. Oh, do you know what? This one because mm. I wonder if this one's on your. Actually, I better save it because this might be on your list. Probably not. Go on. Uh, give there's it a favor that I know. There's a director that I know you really love because we've talked about him previously. Yes. Um, 
and he had a film this year. You ready for the synopsis? Uh, I I know who it is, and I wonder which film it is because oh. I bet he had two films. He had two this films year. this year. So go ahead. All right. A game designer on the run from assassins oh, must no, play. Oh no, it's not the film I thought it was at all. Sorry, yeah, not you my know which director. Film this is. No, go on. Uh, a game designer on the run from assassins must play her latest virtual reality creation with a marketing trainee. Oh, existence. Existence. Yep. No, sorry. Do you know who I thought we'd spoken about before? Who? who? Had two films out this year. Who's that? Joel Schumacher. Oh. He had 8mm and Flawless release. Yes. Oh, yep. Well, Flawless was on my, uh, was maybe I going was to gonna be one guess that I was going to choose. So... You're a big Cronenberg fan, aren't you? I am. Yeah. Funnily enough, though, I've written this down as one of my least favorite Cronenberg films. Yeah. So that was an interesting talking point. There um, you go. But yeah, I think maybe it needs a revisit, but... It is a very, it's a forgotten Cronenberg. Mm. People and also just... overshadowed by The Matrix. And also... Yeah. Well, it's because it's fucking bonkers and, yeah. it's, and it's dealing with a lot of the similar similar issues a lot of this kind of what do we consider to be reality and all that kind of stuff um interesting interesting again big jude law film that didn't well i mean jude i really like i'd love to do an entire podcast on the career of jude law maybe contrasted with the career of renee zellweger interesting and they meet in cold mountain anyway <laughs> that's uh yep yeah. For another time. Can I have another one? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to do one more. All right, one more. One more. Oh, which one? One more. I know, which one? Which one? This is tough. Yep. Okay. It is. I'm going to do this one. I'm okay. going to do this one. Hopefully, I'll know what this is. So, this wa- this movie, mm-hmm. this was an epic flop. Oh. Uh, and it was meant to be one of the big movies of the year. Okay. When Eleanor, Theo, and Luke decide to take part in a sleep study at a huge mansion, they get more when they than they bargained for. When Mr... Oh, fuck, I'm going to read this all again because <laughs> I've made a shambles of it. When Mr. Someone <laughs> comes to tea. Yeah. I'm going to try okay, that again. Try again because I have no idea what you're talking about so far. When Eleanor, Theo, and Luke decide to take part in a sleep study at a huge mansion, they get more than they bargained for when Dr. Marrow tells them of the house's ghostly past. The ghostly past of a house and it was a film... That was a flop. Huge flop. Huge flop. It's not the sixth sense. Uh, no, can I have another clue? Like, uh, was nominated for all the kind of Razzie Awards for that year. Oh, uh, sh- I didn't follow the Razzies when I was 12. Uh, directed by Jean de Bont. No. Oh, no. No. Starring mm-hmm. Catherine Zeta Jones, Liam Neeson, mm. and Owen Wilson. No. Really? I've drawn a complete blank. I'm sorry. I no. This, I really thought everyone had seen this movie and everyone just acknowledged how terrible it was. Not The Haunting. Never. Never. Not. Never. It was Tyson's a, showing me the pictures, by the way, when I don't guess them. It like. was a huge <laughs> flop. Like, huge. The budget was, like, over 100 mil. Budget was 80 mil. Wow. And it grossed, uh, only opened at 30 mil. Yeah. On its opening and then just went down from there. Mm, well, no. I don't know what that is. Well, they. I love that you don't even, I didn't like, follow it's Catherine. actually, like, a new, like, that's a new thing to you to see that. And just yeah. Be like, I don't, I don't. Just, I have no idea. I have no idea that movie existed. No. And I swear there's like eight films called The Haunting as well. Like it's, it's just been it's very caught true. up in. Hey, they, so well. they were just some of the forgotten films. You, I'm just going to rattle off a few more, but we don't have to guess them because I just want to bring them up and see if you have any reaction to them whatsoever. Okay. Wing Commander. No. Zero reaction. Virus. Zero reaction. Teaching Mrs. Tingle. Uh, I know that Katie Holmes was in it. I didn't watch it. The Ninth Gate. Uh... Don't know much about that. No. Maybe. Is that Kevin Bacon as well? No. no. Who's that? Johnny Depp. Oh, no. The Mod Squad. No. The Messenger. Story of Joan of Arc. No. Wait, is that the one with Lily Sabisky? No. No. Then never mind. <laughs> Life. 
with Eddie Murphy hey, and Martin Lawrence. Never seen it though. No. I know it though. Forgotten film. Never and seen one it. more. Blue Streak. Oh, you know what? I had Blue Streak on my shelf at home for, on DVD for some reason. I've never seen it, but I own it. Well, there you go. Well, I don't because I got rid of all my DVDs, but I did own it. Well, these were the, they that that was my list of those movies that. Uh, I've got a good one to add to that list until someone told you that that movie existed again. Okay. Topsy Turvy oh, by Mike the, Lee. Yeah, the Gilbert Sullivan. Yeah, no one ever talks about that film anymore. No. 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 Never. No. Um, well, actually, yeah. The, these are the, well, Topsy Turvy is one of the films that I pretend that I've seen that I haven't. Yes, very good. And I'll, I'll list off just a few more I for you. I would love you. to hear these ones. Drop Dead Gorgeous. Yep. I've never seen never it. Never seen it. I pretend that I have, though, maybe. I probably just said, yeah, I've seen it, but yeah. I haven't. Kirsten Dunst. Because I haven't. Uh, yeah, K- Kirstie um, Alley. Kirstie Alley. Someone probably dies. It's a beauty uh, pageant what's her thing. Name from, um, what's her name? For, she was in She was in a bit for about three minutes um, from Wild Things. Good old what's Wild her name? Things and World Is Not Enough. Um, oh. Charlie Sheen. Denise Richards? Denise Richards. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Office Space. Never seen oh, it. I've seen Office Space. Pretend that I've seen it all the time. Watch um, Office Space. You'll I like don't it. pretend it all the time. I just, I've seen like a bits of it. There's yeah, something in a car. Anyway. <laughs> Buena Vista Social Club? No, nah, yeah. Nah, never, never seen it. it. Never but, you know, it. I'll be, I used to recommend it to people on DVD. If they yeah. asked me for, like, something cultural, I'd be like, here you go. <laughs> because people, like, it's like, <laughs> like, oh, it's got really good music. Like, whatever. I love Havana. Like, you know, it's, <laughs> I really want to go to Cuba one yeah, day. I, perfect, anyway, perfect. full of shit. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, I said Topsy Turvy. The other one is Romance, which is a Catherine Brier French film. I saw Anatomy of Hell that she did yeah. and Roman, I, I kind of, I'm just like, yeah, I've seen all these. I just, I lie about seeing foreign <sighs> films all the time and so, because most people haven't. So <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, so when, cause we were obviously, uh, I was what, 17, 18 at the time, mm. but my friendship group, um, cause we were all kind of big movie fans Yeah, would attempt We'd be like, okay, look, we, we're, we're meant to watch these films. Yeah. And I can't remember which one. I think I haven't seen Anatomy of Hell, but I think I've seen Romance. Yeah. Because Anatomy of Hell came out when I was 16. Okay. So, so yeah. that was my I think by then I'd given one. up on that kind of, yeah. that, you know, French real sex films where mm. I was just like, you know what? There's just nothing going on in this really. Like, I, yeah. I couldn't. I, I tried my best to find, like, the artistic merit, and I'm just mm. like, nah, this is just not for me. I think you can just say, yeah. I can't, yeah, do With Catherine Ray, you can just safely say that all of her films are about misogyny and, like, women's sure. just, um, that they they participate, they go along with it, and then they kind of feel terrible about it or something. Like, and you okay. just watch that, yeah. Anyway. You just watch that unfold over That's two it. hours. Yeah, exactly. Great. And it's in explicitly through sex. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, anyway. there you go. Uh, well, good times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, let's move on to... Fun. That was fun. We're going to move on to our top three. This is where things get pretty intense, Jamal. All right. Now, you're going first. I'm going first. Three. My number three. <gasps> it's a cartoon. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I know what it is. Do you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it starts with an I. It does start with an I. <laughs> yes, yeah. well done. It is The Iron Giant. The Iron Giant. Yes. I only watched this for the first time like a few months ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. How did you go? Was I it beautiful? I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. It is but I gorgeous. Just, for that reason, just because it was so fresh to me, sure. I, I couldn't put I it on the list. I completely understand. Um, it is... Uh, it, it is a, a, a kind of a, it's almost like a relic of a of a of a kind of co- movie that doesn't exist anymore. Mm. It kind of feels like a like a Don Bluth, like um, who did all like Land Before Time and Swan Princess yes. and stuff. It has this kind of this uh, it does this have a very innocent land sincerity time. to it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I I fucking love it. Um, yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful. It's film. so beautiful, and the the um the way that it uses Superman as a as a metaphor as well has always been mm. really close to me because it's a character that um that I have just been obsessed with since I was a kid. So I went through a really big pay- phase of like collecting a whole bunch of Superman stuff and really kind of in, like just getting involved in Superman as an idea, like yeah. just that kind of. I would watch the movies, I'd read the comics, I'd watch the cartoon show and everything about Superman I just adored. And so the way they used it in this film just like ruined me the first time I saw it because I, I didn't watch this in 99. I saw it uh, probably about 10 years later. Yeah. 
and since then I've just yeah just cannot cannot say enough how just beautiful I think this film is um and funny and Harry Connick Jr it Incredible. does just such a wonderful voice performance in it. Absolutely. Um, One of the like sexiest voice performances. Yeah. <laughs> and like, like, you know, easily. He's, 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 he's blessed with an incredibly sexy voice. Yeah, yeah, he is. In, yeah. Uh, in general. We were just talking about him the other night for some reason when we were, uh, we were listening to some singer. And I was just like, it's no Harry Connick. Like, that's, we were listening to a jazz singer, and I was, a male jazz singer. And I was like, yeah, but he's no Harry Connick. Mm. And it just, it's, it's, I could sum up so many things in life. <laughs> About yeah, but he's no Harry Connick. Yeah, like because he really just he's nailed everything. He's he's he can like he can sing like nothing else, and it's sexy as shit. As a person, he seems like the nicest fucking guy in the world. Yep. Um, and I actually have never hated him in a film. I always, I think he's actually kind of underrated as an actor. Mm. He doesn't really get to do as much anymore. But um, I just watched him recently at the. It's like the first episode of season four, I think, of Will and Grace is when they yes. meet, and he's. Yeah. On the horse, and he's oh, like trying he's just, so, like he's so so charming, yes. and she's just like, just she's like, no, I can't, like, <laughs> and like it's such a like that. And it's their, like he's the perfect whole, man. Just take him. <laughs> their whole story, yeah. is just is just oh, amazing, amazing, and Will and Grace, yeah, lovely. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I can't say enough about it. I don't want to spoil it, but it's just a kid finds a big giant robot. In um, a field behind his house. Yeah. Um, it's an alien robot that um, it's set in the fifties, so it's during a lot of this kind of the the nuclear, uh, nuclear threat kind of paranoia. Yeah. And so uh, w- uh, that leads to kind of government interference with what's going on, and things kind of spiral. I'll just leave it there. But um, it's gorgeous. It is your typical kind of kid finds a parental figure. Yeah, you know, in a very unexpected place, or even just a friend in an unexpected yeah. place, I think. And the robot is voiced by Vin Diesel, which I always found really interesting because mm. it's um it's a very nuanced vocal performance for very few words. Absolutely. Um, well, it was interesting because when Vin Diesel was cast as Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy, I did not understand why on earth sure. that was such a big deal. Yeah. I'm just like, this is a weird thing for him to be doing. And then someone explained to me, like, no, you don't understand. He's the Iron Giant. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for Vin Diesel to come back and do voice work, you this is very important. Yeah, a big, a big amount of And a very us. sensitive thing. And I was like, oh, I haven't seen this Iron Giant, so yeah. I should watch it. <laughs> yeah. and, it and it was also one of the early directional director efforts of Brad Bird, who, yes. was, um, who did probably the best Pixar, my yeah. my favourite Pixar film in Incredibles. So, um, okay, I don't know what my favourite Pixar film is actually, but uh, I think Brad Bird is like he's... I haven't seen Tomorrowland. No, I haven't seen Tomorrowland either because I was put off. I he made, to get a in bit my distance. opinion, IMO, the best Mission Impossible oh, yeah, film. Yeah. It's like, not even, that's not hands even a down. question. Yeah, yeah, it is the best. It is the best. What's Easily it the best. Ghost, it's ghost Protocol? Ghost Protes. Ghost Protes. <laughs> ghost Protes. <laughs> ghost Protes for the win. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Iron Giant. Watch it. It's awesome. Number three, Jemima. Are we up to three already? Yeah. Okay. Well, my number three is a Spanish film. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, I, I know which one it is. All and about I my it. mother. Yeah. This is uh, the director is Pedro Almodovar. Yes, now or Almodovar. I, now you are a big fan of this this director. I'm, I'm a huge fan of him. Um, um, so I remember. I think we talked about this when Skin I Live In yeah. came out. I feel yeah. like we had a conversation about. Well, this. Skin I Live In was the film that kind of uh, I had seen all about my mother. All about my mother was one of the first films I ever bought on VHS, and okay. I bought it. Purely for the cover. Sure. Because it was this that striking weird, pop art uh, image yeah, of a yeah, woman. Yeah. All these like beautiful colours. And I was like, I don't know what this is. It had all these little all of the star reviews on yes. the cover. Yeah, and yeah, I, and yeah, yeah. if I saw the stars and the wreaths or whatever, I was like, Oh, this is a good film. Right. Like or the palms or whatever. I love it. Right. I you love know, I'd be like, oh, yeah. oh like my dad, his whole tip with going to the video store is if it doesn't have like star reviews on the cover, then it's not a good movie. And I'd be like, of course. So like I saw this and I was like, this Safe is thoughts. so good. It was like 10 bucks or something. Oh, bargain. And I watched it and it was one of the strangest films I've ever seen. The plot sure. is essentially a boy gets 
killed. Um, he gets hit by a car uh, trying to chase an actress um, that he really admires, who's right. just been in a production of Street Car Named Desire. Okay. She's playing Blanche Dubois. Um, and years later, his mother, who is there with him on the night that he dies, um, becomes the personal assistant of this actress and then fills in for the role of... Stella on the stage while she looks for the boy's father who mm-hmm. has since become uh who is a uh who is a a drag queen um and a prostitute so she goes looking for the father to explain to him to let him know oh you you had a son and he died because she never got to tell him about him anyway and she meets on the way uh What's her name? Penelope Cruz. Yep. Who is a nun who has had sex with the father of her son as well right. and is pregnant. So she's a pregnant nun. Okay. He, the guy also has AIDS. And right. <laughs> so she, the nun has AIDS too. It's, okay. it's, wow. I know it sounds like it's such a convoluted, strange thing, but it's this really beautiful, funny, colorful, sexy thing about like performance and womanhood oh, you're right. and it's written as in like an homage like made to, as an homage to jenna rollins because the oh, first cool. scene is taken right out of opening night which is the cassavetes film from sure. the mid-70s yeah okay great and bet davis as well um it's well. a very like it's called all about my mother all about eve sure so there's a lot about like uh, the it's just it's just it's one of those like sensationalizing of women in all forms cool. and and the the love of womanhood and femininity and sex in like loud incredible ways and he just writes the most interesting beautiful roles for women yeah and so yeah that's it i love it is it a favorite our of our film yes uh but i i've never seen a film of his that i haven't liked so, sure yeah. I, i've got to be honest i've never seen a film he's made about 20 yeah and and i just had a bit all... of a look through because i was kind of like i'm sure i've seen one and i was like oh wow i haven't even seen no. i haven't seen one anyone you want anyone you put on wherever you think it's gonna go it'll go somewhere totally different yeah, right. and you will be thrilled very good uh my number two <laughs> my number two is one we have discussed already and we asked to bring back to later the sixth sense no we've done that one. Oh, fight club Fight Club! Yeah, Fight Club is oh, my number was, two. Okay, Fight Club was four for me and two for you. All right, great. Yeah. I think we can acknowledge <laughs> it's a pretty great... Six cents. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that, yeah. was, that was 20 minutes ago. That was, sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> we can acknowledge that this is just a, I think, a, a kind of a masterpiece, I would it is. say. I mean, yeah. it introduced me to Fincher. It introduced me to an interest in film that I didn't know I had. Yeah. But also, it is a film that I watch over and over again, and every time I learn more about people yep. and about the world. Like back then, I'm like, "Oh, this is just a cool film about like dudes wanting to be anarchists <laughs> and stuff like that." And yeah, and now it, I'm like, "No, it's about like this idea of like a toxic masculinity, yeah, and 100%. it's about you know the 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 roles that we invent um, to impress the people that we like, you yep. know, and." It, you know, it's all about like just he meets a woman and he transforms into another person to be a man for her. Like, yeah. and it's so ridiculous and unnecessary. And and it's an incredibly romantic film for that reason, funnily enough, yeah. like despite all of its oh, you know, I, I vulgarities is, or whatever. The romance is actually like one of the more kind of uh, like uh, easily likable parts of the film, I guess, is mm. for want of a better description. But, um, yeah, and it's funny and ridiculous. It's, and it's really funny. It's ridiculous. It's like the 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 Brad Pitt performance is really something else. Like it is just dripping with masculinity. Yeah, and it like it takes a certain kind of actor to be able to pull that off. Like because mm. it's it doesn't feel inauthentic. No, and considering as well that they there's that scene on the bus where they point to the Calvin Klein model. Yeah. And say like, oh, is that the idea of a man? It's yeah. just like Brad, honey. Like you could be a Calvin Klein That's model. Exactly, like are you yeah. joking? Like you know, is, in the right he circumstance, he's transformed he, though. Yeah, he absolutely. Can, he could be either. He is. Yeah, this is. You know, this was peak Brad Pitt. It was. Yeah. He was the most attractive man in the world, but also the coolest guy in the world. Well, so this he was is the, the transition though, because he was a romantic lead up until this point. Yeah, true. When actually. he then, oh, it's kind of hard to sort of like pin down. Sort of got what like the, meet Joe Black and well, meet Joe Black, Legends of the Legends Fall. Oh, oh. Um, 
oh, what are the other? They're all like fancy. Interview with a vampire. Yeah, like they're like kind of half tacky romance. Like you know, he was an objective. You know. Is there anything that I'm just checking to see if there was anything that kind of bridged the gap, or is it no? Did Fight it just Club, go straight into Fight Club. He became a badass, and yeah, it did. I think possibly had he not made Fight Club, he wouldn't be as popular with the boys as he is. Like you oh, know. he made, he'd, he had made Twelve Monkeys and Seven, so I'll kind of. But okay. that was that was Fincher. I mean, I fi- yeah, Fincher he, I obviously forget. saw something in him mm. anyway by casting him in Seven in the first place. Um. He likes his cute boys, though, too, Fincher. I mean, the thing is, for me, like, I got that Brad Pitt was objectively attractive, but this film was all about, like, I fell in love with Edward Norton. Sure. Like, I loved the manic crazy dude running around in his, like, boxes, yeah. you know, at the end of the film. I loved his, that beautiful shot when he realizes that he can cry at the support groups and he, there's this, like, this the point of view of the like the bulletin board that he sort of turns to in yeah. like in abs like as if he's just been freed from this like dark yeah. cloud and he's just like looks at this bulletin board like oh I could just go and cry with these strangers <laughs> like you know <laughs> yeah a hundred percent and everything of course that he's cynical it, it, it's uh, like it's a great film just about human behavior about men and women and how they relate to each other and men and men as well mm-hmm. and. There are so many lessons in this film. I think that it carries on into the social network as well. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, like I think I the social that. network is like a spiritual kind of sequel to Fight Club. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just, I mean, I think that it's it's just a perfect icon of, I don't know, that great beginnings of what cinema can be. And I think Fincher yeah, is one of the evolving directors who I will always follow. Yeah, Bec- for sure. And I will I always trust him, you know. Oh, there's yeah, there's never any there's never any question when you when you go into a Fincher film that you at least know that you're going to be it's going to be very like exceptionally well made and be saying something. Yeah. And you might not be on board for all that. Like I know that I don't love all of his films, but Benjamin Button. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, Benjamin Button. That's it. No, I'm like, not, into I'm not it. a big fan of. And um I didn't dig too much the uh Girl with Dragon Tattoo. Oh but, no, I liked that. Which uh, you know I'm not, sorry not... they didn't do it another one yet anyway. Yeah. Um but you know, you you know that you're getting something with Fincher, you're getting a you're getting a statement and you're getting an exceptionally well made food food film. A I well must, made food. I must be hungry. He's hungry. Um, He's looking at Skittles. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Skittles. <laughs> oh, they're uh, empty. Nah. Hey, there's Skittles in there. <laughs> um Yeah. Fight Club, it's great. All right. Let's move on. Your number two. What could your number one be? I don't um, you're not gonna like my number one. I can guarantee it. Jeez, this is fascinating. What's your number two, Jamal? Are you having last minute doubts? No, no, never. No. My number two is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Oh. Ah, how could I not? How could you not? How could you not? And I had to, like, it was hard. I was like, geez, I just love telling people how much I love The Phantom Menace so much. Do you, you want to make it your number one? It's going to have to be the second. Okay. No, it can't be the first. Okay. It can't. But I love this movie. I know. Oh, yeah, of course, it can't be your first because yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah right. you know what my first I know what one you know is. What is. And if anyone listened last week, they should know too. Yes, they. Funnily enough, we discussed uh, my favorite movies in the last two weeks. Um, there well, you go. Yep. Well, um, can I? <laughs> we we did recommend this last time, but I think I would. I'm going to also post it again because I think it effectively. Talks about why you like oh, this film so much. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Much. The video I You've made. You've made a video yeah. um, available on Vimeo, I believe. Yes. YouTube oh, I put it on YouTube as well. They haven't come no, and I've, stolen it away from you yet? Funnily enough, uh, 30 days after... No, no, like three months after I'd initially posted it and they'd knocked it down, yeah. I just pleaded fair use and Disney said yes immediately and I oh. didn't realize how easy that would be. Great. So I just said, I'm a critic, blah, blah. And they were like, oh, yeah, fine. Yeah, so great. now you can watch it on YouTube. Awesome. I think it's had like 12 whole views. 12? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just, that's amazing. Um, well, I'll post the link to that and maybe we'll get a few more because I know that it's a it's not it's not the popular opinion. No. But um, you know, either watch it to watch it because you have an open mind and you want to have your, you know, you want to see a different view or watch it because you're also a stubborn pain in the ass and you want to get 
but heard about something. Yeah. Also, <laughs> Either way, you if, get the views. If you want to get in a fight with me about it, watch my video so that you at least have an informed argument yes. to form. Like, yes. Because I'm ready. <laughs> That's it. Now, and you know, I, I, I make no, no, uh, you know, bones of the fact that I don't agree. I yeah. don't, I don't find much Literally, merit in no this film. No one does. So but, that's you know, okay. I, I, res- you know, I, like I mentioned to you as well, last time we talked about it, um, you, you can't argue with some of the things that you talk about. Mm. Um, I, like I said, the, uh, the video sums it up pretty well, but do you want to give us the, the Cliff's Notes version of, of why you love this movie? Uh, I think that I, I'm a big fan of Lucas's vision for the film. Mm-hmm. I like the origin story of Anakin very much. Mm-hmm. I like the use of the duality, the symbols, the establishment of the Sith and Jedi as two equal powers on, and the idea of the Force being this balance they have to sort of Mm -hmm. maintain, the unethical nature of the Jedi, not as the sort of good guys necessarily, but there's something very questionable about their manipulation of Anakin. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that the whole trilogy is about the manipulation of Anakin essentially. And that this film establishes it really well. I prefer Sith. That's my favorite of the, that okay. of the three of them. Sure. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think the pod race is great. I think that it has a much better sense of wonder and I think that it is actually beautifully directed. Okay. I love it. And I was just, I think, I just, I love it so much. Anyway, I think it's great. It's not... Look, I just it, I think it's better than the original ones, and I think that it's way better than the Abrams stuff. Okay. And the the reason that I decided to go back and watch Phantom Menace was because the magic that I felt when I saw it in the cinema, I did not get out of the Force Awakens, and I said there's something very wrong here. And I went back and I was like, oh, the Phantom Menace is way better. That's what it is. Okay. So, yeah. Very. It's it's you know you're, you're dropping bombs all over the place. And, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I know. I love. I, lo- I love the. I love your. Uh, your. Your cavalier <laughs> approach to it. Yeah. It's better than this. It's better than this. Yeah. Dropping bombs. That's I love it. it. Like I just. I, I can't. It's just a truth to me. Like that's. Uh, if, look, to hey, be perfectly you know, that's plain. there. Are, there are very similar. I feel similarly about other franchises. No doubt that um, I would happily happily defend. Um, knowing that it is not the popular opinion. Mm. Um, so this is interesting because now we've arrived at your number one. We have arrived at my number one. And I cannot think of what it would be. Uh, like uh, I'm looking over my... I've got a list of about 30 films on the page in front of me. It might be a film that you actively dislike. <gasps> oh, no. Oh. So um, bro, oh, I'm going to come out and say it. And it's... Look, it's... If, no clues I'm pretty there. sure that if you could, you could ask... Uh, a select group of people who my favourite author is and they would be able to answer this. Oh, yeah. And my favourite <laughs> film of the year is The Green Mile. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Green Mile was on my nah list. Yeah. Like, my my disappointments I completely list. understand. Yeah. Um, anyway, please tell me yeah, about it. Well, tell look, me about your love of The Green Mile. My love of The Green Mile uh, starts from my love of the books. Um, well, the book, it's, it's a, it was released as a, as a serial... Really? Um, it was released in volumes. I didn't um, know that. They were a couple of months apart. Um, I didn't read it that way. I have ended up just getting it as a book before the uh, before I saw the movie. And I absolutely loved it. I th- it might have been... Ooh, I don't think it was the first Stephen King book I ever read. But it might be. Now that I say it out loud, it actually might have been. Okay. Um, and... I had seen and previously already loved Shawshank. Um, right, 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 right. And it, Which, is it's, it Frank Darabont? Yeah, yeah. So and seeing that it was the it was the same kind of creative team coming together for this, um, I always felt confident it was going to be a good film. Um, yeah, it kind of it was funny because I know it like it was very well reviewed and made a lot of money and was nominated for a bunch of Oscars, mm. and now. Is kind of like yeah the 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 black sheep of the Darabont um, Stephen King kind of run. Yeah, people talk about it as the oh no yeah he didn't quite nail Green Mile and I kind of like what are, you, what are you talking about man I fucking I love this film like I really love it. There's um there's a quote that um Ebert says about Shawshank, and it's I think it's on one of the DVD 
boxes where he talks about how a great film removes your awareness of you watching a film. Yeah. Um, and that's how I feel about the Green Mile. Okay. I, I watched the three and three, almost three hours of Green Mile, the three and a bit hours of Green Mile. And I don't feel like I've been watching a film anymore. I feel like I'm just experiencing a story and like just part of that, the, of what's occurring in it. Um, and I think it's just uh, the, the, it's, uh, the tragedy elements of it are, are so beautifully handled. The performances are all really great. This is my kind of, I love this era of Tom Hanks as well. Yeah. Where he, he's showing kind of wear and tear but still has that kind of – this is why he's kind of our Jimmy Stewart is because as he gets older and more worn, I guess, weathered, he still has this amazing ability to, to be hopeful. Yeah. Um, which a lot of people just – and it, but it exudes from him naturally mm. and um, that's, that's, that's a agree. tough thing to come by. Hanks is one of those few actors who is – he will often play a character just trying to do the right thing and that is a very – difficult yes. sad situation yeah. like there are some hands tied there is some kind of injustice but we never for a second doubt that there he is a principled and good person yes yeah 100 percent. um it has two really like just of the most hissable villains mm. that um and in i don't think it i don't think it's like I, I wouldn't say they're overly written in any way. I think they're just really effective in what they are. Um, it's It cuts certain things out of the book. It's a really effective adaptation of a very long book. I think it knows what's cut out and it still manages to hold all the, the magic in the book. Yeah. Um, I, just, I love it. I love the production design. I love the way the, the jail looks and feels. Um, yeah. I love... Michael Clark Duncan's performance, I think it's just outstanding. Which one is Michael Clark Duncan? He's the he's the huge he's John Coffey. Oh, and he's, he's the dead. huge criminal and he's yeah, he's yeah. passed away. Uh it takes a certain amount of skill to make someone that physically imposing, also that uh tender and yeah. n- and naive and I think he does an incredible job of that. I just I love it. I think it's wonderful. The score, out of control, good. Um Yeah. I I, I I, d- I don't want to say I like it more than Shawshank. Actually, I will. I I like it more than Shawshank. I don't. No, I don't know if it's a better movie than Shawshank, mm-hmm. but I think I enjoy the experience of watching it more than I do the, the watching Shawshank. Yeah, it, it was kind of when I was looking at it, and I wrote it on my thing, and I was like, "Well, it's going to be in my top 10. And as I put it against every other film, I went, "Oh, I like that better." And it just kept jumping up and up and up, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Well, it's it's going to be my number one." So there you go. Well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Wait, uh, but look, this is this I, is a similar again, kind of. I remember watching it as a kid and thinking it was one of the best films I've ever seen. Sure, I always assumed it was directed by Steven Spielberg as a uh, child. I remember I lumped it in with a a, as a Spielberg film. It's definitely got a and I, Spielbergian vibe. I didn't. I think even Shawshank may have been a Spielberg film. Like for whatever reason, Frank Darabont sure. didn't exist until I was a teenager, and I was I like, you. "Oh, you made these films? Oh, okay." Yeah. Um, it was some of the similar cases. Robert Zemeckis, like I didn't put his anyway. I wasn't into directors as a child, sure. obviously. Um, but look, look, when I was younger, I loved this film. I mm. thought it was like so sad, so tragic, so much injustice, and there are so many memorable scenes of awful things happening. True, <laughs> and but you know, it is to the point that it's just yeah. like. They're, they they you are berated with some See, of this it's, stuff. It's funny. It's because it's not those moments that I remember mm. from it. It's the it's the other stuff. It's the it's the bits that give me hope from it that yeah. I remember more. No, it's um, Sam Rockwell with that moon pie in his mouth. Yep. Um, his death scene that Percy didn't wet the sponge. Yeah, like I, mean, I remember, that's it, that's like it. I can name characters because I'm still, you know what I mean? Like I'm hurt and I'm still angry at yeah, this guy, Percy which is interesting is... that it would have that effect. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's very, it's very tragic. I, I'd like, I just, you know, yeah. I think, it, yeah, I think in, if I was, uh, it, it's it's an emotional mm. like attachment to this film. Like I I love it on an emotional level because of the way it makes me feel. I don't yeah. know if I can fully support it as a for its 
how it's made or in in those regards. But I have to acknowledge the fact that sometimes movies just do everything that I want a movie to do. To do yeah. And I can and I acknowledge that that is an entirely one hundred percent personal experience. But that is that is this movie to a T. It is mm. it is a movie that does everything that I want a movie to do, and it does it for me. And it may might not do it for many other people, but it's that's not I'm not watching movies for other people. <laughs> yeah, you watch them for yourself, and you know that's that's you know there are certain movies like that, and I you know I I think I I got to a point where I'm kind of I don't care as much about hiding that fact anymore yeah. it's kind of just like no fuck it man i love this movie and i love it sick and mm. i don't care if it kind of gets put in the as the the shit one in between um well it's time for your number one Jamal. well we all know what it is yes it's eyes wide shut it is it's just my favorite movie <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, it, like so that's it's impossible to, for it to be any other position because it is your you would call this your favorite movie yeah yeah it's the film that i will watch over and over again um i don't know if i'm I'm not at the point of necessarily finding anything new but it has an idea in it that i love uh, when executed in the cinema is that something it's a it starts off as a you know it's it's about a marriage but it turns into a big crime murder thriller that doesn't really happen basically right but I mean that isn't. I'm, oh look, it's a Kubrick film. It just takes a very small idea of a man who is. It's about a, a rich, like Upper East Side couple. They, you know, they. It starts with them going out to a dinner of one of his clients. It's a very ritzy, mm. you know. I mean, he's still he's a working doctor. He's not a one percenter necessarily. So they go. Sidney Pollock is the host of this party. Mm-hmm. Um. And they both immediately part ways and she flirts with an older man who wants to take her upstairs and mm-hmm. have his way with her. And he is, has two supermodels on his arm immediately. Sure. And so you see that there's or there's this weird like temptation and this uh, inappropriate like flirtation um, on both sides. Yeah. And of course... She gets really stoned and sort of says, did you want to fuck them? Mm. And he's like, no, I'm very, you know, I'm a doctor, whatever. Like, I just met them. They were being friendly. Mm. And she says, oh, well, I nearly left you once for this sailor that I saw at this um, at this place. She's like, I would have given up everything had he just looked at me one more time. Mm. And th- this story goes for about 15 minutes, she tells and you and it's a very serious scene and he is so um he he's so broken by this concept that his wife's love for him could be distracted or turned away mm. or it could end yeah or that he his wife has desires that he doesn't know about mm. um and that she might want, you know, he understands that men want to fuck her, but he doesn't understand that she wants to, she sure. could want to be with other men. Anyway, and so that sends him off on this, like, sex odyssey into, like, the darkest far reaches of the imagination. Sure. To a sex cult orgy, to a prostitute with HIV, and it's just, like, it's a giant, like, you know, it's an odyssey adventure, sure. like, film. Just about like over a couple of nights, the prostitute ends up dead. He believes the Illuminati have done it and all this sort of stuff. I right. don't think it's an Illuminati film. I remember having this really long argument with a doctor once on a date when he was like, they're Illuminati. Like they killed this girl. And I'm like, right. no, they're just super rich and into kinky stuff. And she just died because she was a drug addict. Right. Like, and, and we had, it, you know, it is this divisive film. People sure. think like, no, this is murder plot and all this stuff. It's like, no, this is just him being so, this is the manifestation of all of his darkest fears sure. about his marriage breaking up. Yeah. And it has one of the best ending lines of any film ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're walking around. It's, it's Christmas time. It's a Christmas film. Yeah. They're shopping for the daughter and... You know, uh, everything's come out about like his odyssey, his temptations, and they're both very upset. And they just sort of say that she just says to them, she's like, "Look, I think it's good that we're stronger for this. You know, we've survived this mm. temptation." And she goes, "But there's just one thing that we need to do immediately, straight away." 
And he's like, oh, what is that? And she says, fuck. And that is the end of the movie. <laughs> that is literally the last word is Nicole Kidman saying fuck to Tom Cruise. Also, it's Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise. Literally the hugest couple They were the hugest ever. couple. Yeah. Uh, it was a two-year shoot in London. Jesus. All closed doors. No one knew anything about this movie. Like, they moved there. Um, and Cruz had disappeared. Like, he'd made Mission Impossible. And then he... A giant success. Then yeah. he disappeared. Like, because, hey. It's madness. It's crazy. And it's course, a movie I have to say. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really behind on my Kubrick watching. Um, and I need to... It's something I've always needed to remedy. Tyson, he hasn't even made that many movies. I know. It's just one of those things. It's just always been... Yeah, should I watch that? No, I'm going to watch some trashy other piece of shit instead. No. It's a real mood piece. Like, I think that someone like uh, Paul Thomas Anderson... Or Nicholas Winding Refn, they're the biggest Kubrick impersonators. I think sure. Anderson comes the closest to achieving it yeah. with There Will Be Blood. Okay. Um, but there, there is something essential, particularly about his comedy, that I think a lot of people miss. Sure. Is that Kubrick, I think, on the whole, made mostly satire. Yeah. And it's subtle, but it is there and mm-hmm. you can laugh at, I mean, obviously there's the obvious comedies like um, Dr. Strangelove, Strangelove. Yeah. but Lolita is a comedy. Right. So is, so is Barry Lyndon. So is, yeah. so is Eyes Wide Shut. Like you, unfortunately you are laughing at the terrible things that are happening right. to Tom Cruise in this film. Like okay. it, anyway. Um, but yeah, no, I love it. Um, yeah, it inspires me. <laughs> well, then that's all. I think that's a nice way to, to finish that, actually. Yeah. Is there, are there any last films you just want to, like, yell out? Quickly? Yeah, I'm going to yell out a couple of few that almost made the list. Okay. Here we go. Ten Things I Hate About You. Being yep. John Malkovich. Oh, Blair yeah. Witch Project. Good one. The Insider. Yep. The Limey. The Insider was 99? Yep. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Uh, the Limey and Magnolia. Okay. I've got The Limey. Ten Things I Hate About You. Uh, well, they're, they're on my films I didn't like so much. Hold on. Okay. Oh. <laughs> the Straight Story. David Lynch's yep. The Straight Story. Iron Giant, we mentioned. Yep. Election. Yep. Tarzan. No, we men- I had that on my actual list. Galaxy Quest, we mentioned. Superstar with... Oh, yeah. Uh, Molly Shannon. Yep. Bowfinger. Yep. Great one. Uh, Magnolia. Ed TV. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forget who directed that, but... Ron Howard. Lovers on... Oh, they... Oh, Ron Howard again. <laughs> yeah. It all comes back to Ron. Weird old Ron Howard choices. Lovers on the Bridge, which is a French film by Elias Carax. Yep. Uh, love it. Dogma, we didn't talk about, yeah. but you know, we had a guessing game on it. Yeah. And we did mention American Pie. Very yeah. good. Oh, Jemima. Run Lola Run, actually. I was just Run, one Lola, more. Run. Oh, yeah. Good I just call. wanted to get in a couple of non American releases. No, I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and look, there were many more that 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 didn't even cover like, like films that I've known. I've seen I've seen more than some others. Stupid stuff like Varsity Blues and Three She's to Tango. All that. She's all that. The Mummy, Sleepy Hollow. Oh, the like, Mummy. Like just this yeah. this list of films. It's out of control. It's insane. Um, but we're gonna have to wrap it up. Yeah. So, uh, hey, Jemima, that was really really fun. We didn't keep it under two hours. No, did we? Near. no. Um, but I'm sorry. gonna see. Uh, you'll, I'll be. I'll get to do some crazy editing. And, uh, <laughs> I might even. Yeah, we might have to cut some. Of our conversations a little short but we'll see Oops. how we go um but it's been an absolute pleasure thank you for so much for coming in and uh, doing this it was my pleasure um and uh you have been a saving grace over the last couple of weeks and we can't thank you enough here at nick tice and videotape no i love it it's great i love talking well, um, no, yes. yeah <laughs> and also about my favorite movies all That's the time it. So, uh, okay. and we will just remember everyone jemima's still raising money for her short film uh you can get on the possible i will link that below thank you to very donate much. some cash for uh independent film in australia let's get behind that um thank you you can find us on facebook twitter youtube iTunes, Gmail, all over the place. And you can Gmail <laughs> us. You can email us at nicktysonvideotape at gmail.com. Next week, we might have Nick back. We might not. Who knows? We'll find out shortly. Jemima, Maybe. thank you again so much for coming in. We appreciate it very much. No worries. Anytime. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.